Oh, thank you so much for playing that beautiful intro, uh, Paul, with illustrations by the lovely Featherweight. Thank you so much. Um, again, hello and welcome to Dice Friends. And tonight we will be playing um, Lore of LaRue, which is a nice little adventure from the uh, d and uh, little um, collection of mysteries called Candle Cake Mysteries, which you can purchase at your local game store or check out from your local library. Um, we're, today we will be um, basically playing this for the next few hours. As you may notice, um, a lot of the adventures in Candle Keep Mysteries are a little longer and going to be a little different than what you might see tonight. Um, this is for a couple of reasons. One, we only got three hours. And two, um, you know, every DM is going to put their own personal flair on things. And any TTRPG group knows that Chaos is an active player in any campaign. So we will see what happens tonight. I'm sure it will be 100% normal, nothing weird will happen, and everyone will fall asleep by the end of the stream. So with that, um, th again, thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Um, and if again, if you can't um, be here for the entire stream, we will be putting this up on YouTube and on our podcast um, streams on uh, Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday. With that, let us introduce our players. Kiss, why don't you start? Awesome. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is uh, Nathaniel Kiss, aka What Is Kiss, aka Carl Lyle L. Daniels, uh, Hex Blood Fighter and Wizard, uh, Duke of Eels. Uh, finished up their entire thesis on fashion. Uh, parentheses mostly socks. Uh, <laughs> And uh, now they are back, uh, new and improved, with even less to lose. Happy to be here. Woo. All right. Corey, you're up. Hey, I'm Corey, a.k.a. Coriander, a.k.a. Absalar, uh, a.k.a. Udamir, the half-orc druid, who's now very much stronger than before. Who knows what great challenges <laughs> she came across in trying to heal nature and restore balance in the world uh, <laughs> since last we saw her. Uh, she has not been home to visit her goat family. But that's, did that's she, all I know. Maybe she went off to, she, she visited the Hummels for a while, did some CrossFit with Ulrich. I mean, that's why oh, yeah. she's stronger. Yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of cheese gym weights. <laughs> a lot of cheese. The Hummels have their own goats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just lifting goats. You just like that's how you're getting strong. You just like hoist several goats onto your back, run up mountains. You gotta be kidding. Um, me. <laughs> wonderful. All right, Kathleen, you're up. All right, uh, I'm Kathleen, and tonight I am playing Ontology Jones. Uh, she is a paladin of Lyra, who, as we know, does not care for violence. Um, but uh, a good paladin of Lyra knows that sometimes the uh, careful application of violence can bring more joy to other people. And also, like, if you get a, it's, you can do comedic timing with it, which, you know, just adds to it. Anyhow, uh, ontology is in, uh, is, uh, is um, on a quest to find sacred texts from the far side, um, because they are the uh, holy uh, documents of her particular form of lyrism i guess uh and uh you know she just she just goes where she's needed and today she's needed at level eight so that's what she is <laughs> wonderful 
last but not least, Andy, please reintroduce your reoccurring character. Absolutely. My name is Andy, and I'm playing Terry Fizzlewit, uh, junior adjutant of adequate standing at uh, Candlekeep, um, and a recent uh, expert in the polymorph spell. He uh, he is now committed <laughs> um, all that information to memory and can recite it verbatim. Um, and, uh, yeah, and he, he, he won a, an award last time. What was that? What was that? I remember uh, I... It was the, uh, title of Redundancies. Yes, yes, which he, he is, he is baffled and proud of at the same time. He is, he's sort of, he's not, he's not entirely sure what, what that means for him, if this is a good title or not, but he's very happy to have any sort of, uh, attention. It's um, an increase in pay <laughs> and a parking spot. Oh, heck yes. Okay. <laughs> I got to think about what I'm going to park there. It's going to be nice. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Just... Oh, what is, what is Terry going to park in his parking spot? I'll have to figure out uh, something. Yeah, just figure out what to put there. Maybe maybe it just becomes a storage space for now. Yeah, maybe, yeah. That's maybe they'll of... find something tonight. Yeah, Take yeah. it home with you. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it could be fun. Um, I, I just realized I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle Rapp. I am the dungeon master slash manager for tonight, and I will be leading all these lovely players into um, the wonderful world of Candlekeep. And with that, let us begin our adventure. Um, it is, in fact, um, a wonderful late afternoon in the fall. Um, the air is crisp, the sky is blue and clear, um, that crystal clarity you only get in a, a nice fall autumn day. Um, leaves are starting to um, lose their, their fiery colors and, and just kind of like blow away in the wind. And uh, a maple tree in like the courtyard of Candlekeep is already uh, starting to, you know, a big gust of wind comes along, um, blows various leaves um, away. And one um, actually smacks Terry Fizzlewit in the face as uh, you cross the courtyard going to investigate your new parking space, uh, which is located right next to the library. Um, you discover that it is in fact a rather small space. It is only um, two feet by four feet, and um, but it is yours. It is entirely yours. A hastily scrawled sign has been put up, written in glittering purple ink, saying, um, "Parking spot, uh, parking space of Terry Fizzlewit. Um, do not trespass on pain of pain." Wow. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and you you are. This is your first time as you as you walk up. You know you you kind of like grab the maple leaf. It's rather large, and just out of your face, and you see your parking space for the very first time. Excellent. Terry is overcome yeah. with with pride and propriety, and is still not really sure. He's thinking, how many books could I organize inside of this cube? Uh, that is my all of my own space within this massive complex. Um, and, uh, and, and is, is yeah, uh, puzzling that out. He's, he might be able to fit, um, something like 24 large books, something like 122 smaller tomes and is sort of doing that math in his head. Yeah, as you as you sit there, uh, stand there, um, puzzling over this, you look to your left and you realize that your parking space is actually the very end of of the whole row, and it's it's cozy up right up next to the wall of the library, and expanding for um, going on for about like gosh, uh, at least 120 feet uh, to the left of your space are um, actually what people would consider full-size parking spots um, where a beautiful, beautiful mounts, uh, like little like impromptu stables. Um, you see a glittering golden chariot uh, with a, a, a sign on the side that says the Toretto family um, on it. And uh, you, you realize kind of blatantly that your parking space was actually he just wasn't there before, but it was kind of carved out for you. Oh, wow. Um, that makes him feel even more yeah. special. He doesn't care that it's smaller. Like, someone took the time to, to make this for Terry. That's really meaningful. That's, that's lovely. Um, Ontology, Utamir, and Carlisle, you all um, emerge from the, um, the, the afternoon tea spot uh, salon that is on space at Candlekeep. Um, 
it, it's mostly just like it's pretty it's like a kind of like a faculty area mostly for grad students visitors <laughs> and professors um at candle Key. but there's you know usually some like biscoff equivalents and you know some some like like some black tea and some brown betties uh that have been like placed out on some like very interestingly knit tea cozies um uh, they mostly look like knit beholders um and, the little uh, danglies. Yeah, yeah, little danglies <laughs> uh, kind of coming out. Uh, if you want to create, uh, by the way, audience, if you want to create your own Beholder Tea Cozy, you should do that and let us know. Um, but yeah, so you've emerged with your, um, your um, uh, you filled, filled with tea and filled with um, delicious biscuits and tea sandwiches. And what are all three of you doing in Candlekeep today as you walk out and you see Terry <laughs> contemplating his new parking spot? Uh, well, I think I was blowing off some steam from, you know, doing the research because ontology, despite the fact that she's here, is not much of a book person. So she's, you know, oh, does somebody over there need a hand? I'm here. Let me help you. Right. You know, all, it's all part of uh, duties and stuff. But then I see Terry and I'm going to say, Terry, my friend. Oh, oh my gosh, Terry, I haven't seen you in forever. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to start jabbing at him and tell, uh, tell me everything. What's What's been going on with you? Oh gosh. Wow. Well, there, well, there's been a lot of stuff you missed. This it's been very eventful. Goodness gracious. So we, uh, we worked on the, um, Masfroth's mighty digressions, uh, caper a while ago. Oh, yeah. Gosh. yeah. Well, since then we, a, a bird threw a book at me and I talked to a ghost and then I was, I got this cool lower back tattoo and he lifts up his, <laughs> his cossack and he shows, uh, uh, his, oh, his lower back back to <laughs> that too. I said that is Terry wearing boxers. Terry Terry is wearing fantasy boxers. Absolutely. Okay. They have little Great. purple pentagrams on them. Um, wow! Dang. And Did he, that and, hurt? Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. I'm, I'm that stung a bit uh, when it happened, and um, I can turn into a ghost now. So that's <gasps> I mean, those are the big things. Yeah, isn't that cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so useful. It's very useful. I can pass through. I haven't done that yet, but apparently I can pass through walls. It's no. really, yeah. Wow. What, what have you gotten up to? Oh, I've been around. I've just been helping people. Uh, I didn't think of a lot of detailed backstory. Uh, I, 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 there was a dog that was wandering around. Uh, I teamed up with a dog for a while. Oh. We uh, saved some sheep, came back. Uh, d d uh, d stopped a park from being gentrified for con for like uh, rich people housing, uh, you know that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, went to uh, some labor marches. Excellent. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, Ontology has been very busy. <laughs> Go ahead, Carl. Uh, Carlisle uh, stands up and turns to Terry Fizzlewitz and extends a hand and says, uh, uh, "Terry Fizzlewitz, uh, Carlisle O'Daniels, I believe we've met before." Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I understand your, your thesis went well. Oh, but very well. After I came to the revelation that fashion is mostly socks, I mean, the entire world opened up for me and he takes off his like fancy, fancier glasses than he had before. And you see that he's wearing like a, a complete like uh, armor money suit of armor. Um, and they still got the bag. Uh, but this time the bag is, 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 looks exactly the same, except there's just like, uh, uh, a D and a G on it. So, you know, it's worth so much more. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I wish that there, I wish you were part cleric so I could have like, you say Chanel divinity instead of channel divinity, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Next time you take a level on cleric for me. <laughs> yeah. you do that. So yes, you, Terry is very blinged out, and you see Ontology Jones is also standing there, um, as as you're all clustered around this very small parking lot. Yeah, I, I'm going to introduce myself to Udamir and to Carl because I would not have met them before. But I'm going to try to become your friends. Don't worry, <laughs> Udamir. What are you up to? How, did you did you abscond with a cute beholder mug, or are you um, just kind of hanging out? Uh, I'm not seeing not a, a fan of, of beholders very much uh they tend to do some really nasty stuff to people's brains um this is true 
I was called in to consult on uh, a new piece that had been donated to Candle Keep. Uh, it was written on some bark, but turns out it wasn't actually any language at all. It was just like a bear's scratching post. Yes, uh, there's a there's a um, camera cutaway to like the piece of bark um, actually still attached to a tree, and you see like a bear kind of like doing its like little butt scratch against the tree. <laughs> And then flash forward to like the Udemir holding the bark and being like, this is just, this is just a butt bark. This is a bare butt bark. <laughs> um, and then there was free so... tea. Uh, I've never had <laughs> tea with chocolate in it before. It's a little mm. weird, but not as weird as fruit, dried fruit. The uh, barista yeah. made a note to say that it was extra chocolate tea. It was quite humorous. Uh, yeah, that the bear, uh, the barista is actually a bear folk, so they're a barista. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, uh, Udumir, when you told them about the piece of bark, they're like, "Oh, not again! So sorry." Oh. I don't even know why they had to bring in an outside consultant. All right, it's just so awkward. I mean, they could have just asked me, you know. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah so you, you wanted a, a chai latte? Here we go. Uh, so I asked for a dirty chai, like a shot oh yeah, of just give me a hot second. In yeah, just, just, yeah. boom. Yeah, get the terroir in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah good stuff. Um, so as you're all standing around uh, the, the parking lot, you see um, uh, you see uh, an assistant, a library assistant actually pop out and uh, looks uh, looks around, rap like she's, she's like, her eyes are darting around. She looks a little bit panicked and she sees Terry. She says, Mr. Fisselwit, um, I believe we you are needed inside for your shift. It's starting. We need to, uh, we've got a bunch of books. We've got to sort through. Um... Oh, is it that time already? And he looks at his bare yes. wrist and goes, yes, it is. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry. Hey, great catching up with you folks. I really got, I got, I got, I'm late for work. I got to go. And I, I uh, yeah. zoom up. I, you've got the, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to cast Long Strider on uh, Terry just so he can run a little bit faster. <laughs> Okay, Terry, you suddenly you feel extra like you're able to just you, you think you're just gonna take a couple of steps because literally the um, entrance to the, the library is, is like two feet away. <laughs> and instead you take one step and um, you kind of just end up far inside the library, 50 feet inside. And the assistant Diane is just looking around like, Terry, Terry, it's over here. The, the books are over. We gotta sort them over here. I don't. Oh. Are you getting kind of back? I guess from far away. Go, I'm sorry, and zoom, zooms back. <laughs> Darius says, "Wow, you know, those Pilates have really been paying off. I'm really, yeah, beating feet uh, here. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Diane just sort of looks at you. He's like, okay. Um. So anyway, these need to be reshelved, and uh, you know, we usually. Um, we've got a couple of here that look like they've got, uh, maybe some weird quests that may want to be resolved. Um, but I put some of those on the side, like she picks up a book and it's like dark and it has like a big Molly face on it. And it's going like <laughs> abyssal in abyssal. And she just sort of tosses it to the side. It's like, yeah, no, we don't really want to worry about that one. Um, this one, she picks it up and it's got like little tentacles, like a mind flare and like, no, I, I think we're just going to say that one for later. But, um, Here's one that I think that you might be interested in, at least uh, trying to find this place for. It's uh, it's usually in like the divinity section, but it keeps coming back here. And no matter how many times I shelve it, it keeps coming back here. And maybe maybe you might know something about it. Like Oh, yes. I, th I believe that w the one was written by Fred Penner. Uh, okay, let me oh. take a look at that. This feline gotcha. esque book. Thank you. What is this? What does this uh, one look like? So, so this is a brilliant, beautifully embossed, leather-bound, purple leather book. Um, it is coffee table size. It is twelve by sixteen inches, easily eight hundred pages, um, and it's got a really lovely kind of baroque. Um, uh, in kind of gold engraving and like detailing on the sides and the borders. And in the very center is 
a beautiful golden unicorn head with long flowing tresses, long mane. Um, and, and as you look at it, it's almost as if, if there's like an iridescence to the leather. Um, the, the gold glints and glitters, even though, um, you know, Kamuki Library isn't exactly the most well-lit spot, but it, it definitely glitters and shines a little bit more than it is called for. Um, why don't you go ahead and, and it's called um, the, it's called Silvery Moon. And it is uh, Lore of LaRue Silvery Moon. And if you would like to make an intelligence check, or if anyone else is following Terry in, um, you all know Terry is prone to fall into various <laughs> mishaps if left <laughs> unattended. So um, if, if you want to follow him, that would be cool. If not, uh, maybe you go into the library for different reasons. I, I think I would follow Terry just because he's more interesting than what I was doing. So. <laughs> That's fair. All of you look at the tiny parking space and you're like, yeah, this is not super interesting anymore. Terry's not in here. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever there's a scene when Terry's not around, we always got to say is, where is Terry? <laughs> <laughs> where is Terry? Where did he go? So yes, yeah, so the three of you follow Terry in, uh, out of um, interest, but also possibly concern. <laughs> so if any of you would like to make an intelligence or arcana check, that would be lovely. Excellent. I've got a uh, 22 on that one. Same. Wow. Yeah. Definitely a 10. Uh, I have an 11. Let's stand back and let these two brainy boys handle it. <laughs> to me, you're an ontology. I... You look at these book and you're like, that's a book, all right. It's got covers and pages. Oh, dang, that's it's a us. shiny book. <laughs> I didn't think unicorns came in that color. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, um, Terry and Carlisle, you both simultaneously say, um, that book's enchanted. <laughs> Um, as, as you both look at it and, um, what would you like to do? There is definitely a, um, a feeling, uh, that Carlisle, you and Terry both kind of get from the book that it's, it's magical. It's enchanted. It's not a, an evil enchantment. In fact, it's rather, rather nice. And you also get a tinge of sadness and Terry, when you look at the, at the um, the in the picture of the unicorn on the cover again, you see that it looks just a little sad. If horses can look sad, if unicorns can look sad, and you see like a little diamond tear mm -hmm. coming from its eye. Aww. Uh, and well, Terry takes a look at that and says, "Oh yes, the sad animals section. This is a very popular <laughs> play." And he and he starts walking towards that part of the library, which is conveniently close by. This is. Uh... <laughs> The, you feel the book start tugging itself away from the sad animal section. And book said, and, uh, Terry says to the book, I know, I know, no one likes it. No one likes being here, but it's where you go. And he pulls. Diana <laughs> looks at you and says, I, I, no, Terry, I, I tried putting that there the other day and it, it just kept going back. Uh, I think it wants something. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. saying that the book moved on its own? Well, this is the first time that I've seen the book actively move on its own, but it's it's kind of like, you know, you put on, I put the book, so I originally put the book in the divinity section, I came back to my desk and it was here again. Mm -hmm. Then, like Terry, I put it in the sad animal section next to the sad kittens, the sad puppies, and the sad um, owlbear set, like, whole the sad owlbear series all 12 of them um it didn't want to be there either and then you know i tried i've tried like all the different like as many logical sections as possible um i, I haven't tried culinary yet but i kind of feel like that's maybe not the right place to begin with mm -hmm. um but i think it really really needs it, i think it wants something and the meanwhile in the background you see terry like going like struggling like you're trying to drag this book over to the sad animal section and the book is like tugging the other way yeah. back towards the reception like a marcel Mo marcel marceau routine just just exactly. really <laughs> tugging on that thing uh. <laughs> um 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, ontology. Sorry. Ont- oh, yeah, go can for it. ontology, upon seeing Terry struggling, uh, try to pick up the book and help him with it because he's so much smaller than she is? Um, and then when I get it, can I make a perception check on it? Sure. Uh, go ahead and make me a strength check, and then make me a perception check. All right. Oh well, I failed my strength check. So I. Uh, <laughs> You and Terry together are struggling <laughs> as this beautiful unicorn, uh, this beautiful sad unicorn book wow. is struggling to make its way to the reception desk, away from the sad animals. Uh, Holy moly! Well, this All is. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, but I got a twenty-one on my perception check. But I'm gonna let Carl talk. Uh, while uh, they're uh, struggling with the uh, book, I just wanted to prepare an identify spell for perfect. this minute. All right, uh, so let's go ahead. Oh, why don't you, um, I'm gonna go ahead and resolve the perception and then we'll go over to the identify. Um, so ontology, you notice that this book is, it's definitely, there's def- it's definitely magical. It doesn't want to be put back on the shelf. Um, but, you know, based off of what you see, you also see that there is a little bit of a glow coming inside one of the pages. Um, as you are holding on to the book with with your hands and with Terry's hands, um, so it's almost trying to signal to you, like, please open look me. at this page. Please open. Do I get a vibe off the book? Um, with a perception check, no. Um, but with maybe like if you want to give me wisdom or something, like I can totally or insight. Yeah, if sure. You want it roll insight into the book. Oh, I do want to roll insight. I have a plus six to insight rolls. Okay. Oh, well, I got a nine. Um, that, that page is sure glowy. Okay. <laughs> um, so when you cast the identify spell, Carlisle, uh, you can tell that this is a, um, divinely enchanted book. It is, um, a neutral, good, enchanted book. And that is basically the vibe that you get off of it. There is something very, very strong inside. And based off of your previous adventures, you would kind you probably guess that there is some you could probably go inside like reading rainbow style <laughs> like the last time you <laughs> went into a book. Maybe we should open it and get inside. <sighs> Terry brings out the forms again. He's got all he's got the waivers. <laughs> he's got them on him now. It's just like in the most accept- accessible breast pocket of his of his cloak. He's all right, fine, and passes them out. This is another job, apparently. Most of these books lead to portals to other realms in which we are to find certain artifacts or save certain royalty, and and this is all on the sheet. Is is? Uh, Utamir, can you give me a uh, wisdom check, please? Wisdom insight check. Insight nine. Let's let's take that with advantage. All right. <laughs> Should we bend in your knees a bit? Natural one. Uh, so that's lower. That's a four. So the high roll is a nine. The book feels sad. It feels sad, and it feels a little hurt. You think it's the eyebrows they put on the unicorn? Give it more humanoid features. <laughs> the eyes just get bigger, like anime style. <laughs> it's like <laughs> sad chibi unicorn. <laughs> I feel like I should like cast cure wounds on it or something. Is there, uh, Terry? Is there a, a wizard spell for making someone feel better? Oh, absolutely. Uh, but it is. Uh, it's an. It's an eighth level spell. And it takes, it's, it's so, so much arcane nonsense has to go into improving someone's mental health permanently. Um, but, uh, so it's not within my means. I mean, we could, uh, we, we, we could wake up one of our uh, tenured professors and bother them about it. Or we could, or we could just go, we could just go into the book and try to make a unicorn happy through the solving its problems. Spread joy, you say, says ontology signing the form. I like that you've got waivers now. Yeah, 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 I do. And and that's, uh, Cherry perks up at that. Yeah, I do. Thank you. And I, I think he's uh, organized it very well, and boxes are easily tickable, and the signs are there. So if you could all just, and he passes it around with some pens, if you could all just, you know, initial there, 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 with a signature and date at the bottom, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. 
I, it's, uh, it's a, I've never seen a contract with such a clear, easy to understand uh, language disavowing uh, any um, uh, uh, wrongdoing for any accidental dismembership, dismemberment you may encounter. <laughs> uh, Diane leans over and says, I added the clause about um, random body parts being lost. Mm -hmm. It was cool. It was fun. Yeah, it was a real collaborative project. Nice work. That was an important, yeah. important part, definitely. Oh, wonderful. Um, uh, if you as sign the- Any of you- Oh, go ahead, go Oh, ahead. no, if you just sign the back, you, you can get a free cure wounds from a cleric, it says, just in case. Oh. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, there's also a bit where you sign up for a newsletter, um, which you can get, you know, <laughs> certain discounts on certain candle keep, mis uh, candle keep merch. Terry, this like, is a um, lot of information. Yeah. Who's- where is this going? Who's collecting it? I, I'm collecting it. I'm collecting it. Diane walks out. I was like, I got this. you're not reselling it to third parties? Uh, nope. Nope. We're, we're really not lacking for money. It's just, you know, uh, we've, one of our, one of our librarians is super into designing, um, branded cassocks and, uh, now we've got a whole line. Okay. Well, this is just going to yeah. take me a few minutes to read through. Okay. <laughs> So as you're reading through all of this, um, would any of you like to make a religion check or a history check? Me. All right. Hey, natural 20. So that's yeah. a 23. Ontology. You look at this. So uh, Terry has um, scuttled off to uh, distribute and get the form signed. So you are holding the book. Um, and as you look at it, you're, you're thinking, LaRue, LaRue, this sounds familiar. And you remember that LaRue is a unicorn and they are a lesser deity with strong ties to Mieleki, the god of the forest. And LaRue's um, position is to uh, be her eyes and ears on the material plane. And they are working diligently for the coexistence of uh, humans, elves, and other talking beasts of the forest expanse. And as you remember this, you remember like the the coexist sticker kind of popping up, and then a unicorn kind of like jumping through and over it. And that's uh, that's what you recall about Luru. Luru being um, closely tied uh, to that particular deity, Mieliki. Ah, perfect. Yeah, I used to have a cart a while ago, maybe like five or ten years ago. I had a cart. And I had one of them stickers on the back. Sold yeah. it when I left Waterdeep. But it was a good cart. <laughs> it's it's like um the yeah the the the, the stickers are basically just a, a unicorn but it's like a nyan cat and then it's a rainbow with the coexist yeah. logo on it yeah um so yeah and and as you look at the book you realize like ooh there might be something up with Larue because if that's supposed to be Larue on the cover and Larue is making sad anime faces like something something's wrong yeah. Um, so all of you have signed the waivers, and Diana has collected them all and put them in a rapidly growing file cabinet <laughs> full of these. Um, would one of you like to open the book to the glowing page? Awesome. So, uh, Carlisle, all of you gather around Carlisle, and um, you, you open the book in a beautiful serif font. Um, very nicely calligraphy, uh, calligraphy, I suppose, um, words start appearing in common. Our story starts during the time leading up to the winter solstice on the final night of Uktar in the year 374 DR. A nearly full moon rises beyond wispy clouds as a star-speckled sky darkens against a fading horizon. It seems silent and still here in the heart of the forest, but to anyone who knows the forest well, that silence can be misleading. When you are ready to proceed, turn the page. When you're ready to proceed, turn the page. Done. You turn the page and the book glows and you all feel this ever expanding like glowing purple and gold kind of glow as it comes out of the book and encapsulates all of you and the next thing that all of you know um you are pulled into a forest it's a beautiful um deciduous forest <laughs> to be specific <laughs> 
northern european style <laughs> um beautiful birches and oaks and other um similar trees uh you are um you are you are actually at the edge of a forest a meadow is behind you with softly rolling curves um green grass um you can see that in front of you the forest is um it, it's it also feels a little crisp um in this new place it feels again like um it's the almost like early winter so perhaps a little bit more advanced than what than the world and that you've left behind in terms mm. of time in terms of seasons um but in front of you yeah you see these beautiful trees um you hear some you know some a, a hoot every now and then from an owl and uh you see a path leading in so what would you like to do Oh, the sun is also setting, and it turns the sky a ridiculous pink. Mm. Um, uh, well, uh, I, I suppose we head into the woods. Um, who's with me? Oh, makes sense. I'm here. All yeah. Right. Gotcha. So you enter the forest, and it's strikingly idyllic. Um, for real life people, it looks a lot like a Thomas Kincaid painting or an Elena Danner forest. It's just, you walk in, um, the, the trees and leaves are, they look kind of gilded with the, the, uh, the rays of the setting sun. Again, that rather ridiculous pink and purple sunset is starting to, um, fade, then twilight sets in. And you, you make it about 20 feet into the forest when you start hearing, um, something in the background, you hear kind of like a, a singing, almost like a singing noise, but not any kind of good singing. It's like a and uh, do any of you speak Sylvan? No. Oh, Carl. Oh, Carl does. Common Draconic Elvish and Sylvan. So you hear um essentially a drinking song and it says um uh we're gonna get out tonight we're gonna go and get it tonight we're gonna go and forget our troubles satyrs before haters and three satyrs kind of like stumble into view um all of them have are, are not terribly tall. They're only about three and a half, four feet tall. And uh, they're they're kind of leaning on each other, kind of weaving back and forth, clearly super wasted. Um, and one of them has um, basically a blonde kind of floppy hair uh, that keeps going forward, uh, keeps cutting forward. And then another one is holding uh, what looks like uh, a, a tankard and another one is holding a tankard and what looks like a, a, a like one of those old-fashioned jugs of alcohol with xxx on the side and uh they they stumble forward and they look up at you and they're like oh sup hey hey dude dude hey uh got we got people we got people in the woods man we got people in the woods and the two the other satyrs are like yeah sup Oh my god, they're people. <gasps> they're people. They look cool. Do you think they party? In common. And the blonde oh, sorry. Uh, and the, the, the um the uh this the blonde satyr uh with a floppy like Patrick Swayze point break type hair looks at you, uh looks at all of you and says like Sup brah. In common I relay all of this to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Um they're wondering if we're the type to party and they say uh separa huh no oh, i don't wear one but uh you know it gets in the way of the breastplate uh, <laughs> uh but uh you know uh I, I i they look like they're having a great time what what could you ask them why they're in such a good mood uh carlisle drops their disguise self uh to take on their fey appearance uh and 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 it's just uh they look like a viper fish. They got a little, little, little dangle. Oh, <clears throat> dangler fish. Nice. Um, and they respond in Sylvan. Hey, 
dudes were just passing by because it seemed like a, a total vibe kill on the front of this cover. So are y'all good or are you just down to get smashed, bruh? That's what Sylvan oh. sounds like. Oh, yeah, Sylvan basically just sounds like very, like if you take, <laughs> like distorted bro talk. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, the other um, uh, one, one of the satyrs, the one with the jug, has has fully fallen down, and is on his back and trying to do, um, trying to make dirt angels, which are like snow angels, but instead it's dirt, uh, <laughs> while still holding the jug. And uh, the blonde satyr looks at you and is like, "Oh man, bro, it's so great to see you." Like, ah, oh, I you said that like there you got like some bad vibes like out in front of the forest in this what like this this plane what you say you got bad vibes <clears throat> um let me try to reiterate again <clears throat> it seemed like some ruckus shit was happening based upon the cover of this book bro. righteous righteous yeah yeah well yeah no i mean like you know you're totally that's legit bro i mean like that's why you know we've been me and my bros, me and my boys, like we went out, my boys, we went out, we were uh, hitting up some of this sweet ass mead, um, you know, cause like there's been some like real creepy stuff happening deeper in the forest and you know, like we're not, we're like, we're lovers, not fighters, dude. So like, we just, we, we felt like the best thing to do was like get wasted before like they killed us and like, then we got lost and now we don't know where our home is but like if you want to like help us get home like our home might be able to help you because you know like i think i don't know i i can't like remember what happened hey hey brock do you remember what happened and he turns around and both satyrs have uh fallen on the ground they're both making dirt angels but one um then one kind of flops over and attempts to do push-ups um and then can't, and then just like lies down again. <laughs> and this is like, yeah, uh, Brock doesn't remember. Uh, so like, yeah, if you can like get us back to like the tree where we live, mm. that'd be like solid. Give me a quick sec. Um, it appears something might have came around and caused such distress that they have reduced themselves back to substance abuse. I th think they need our help. <laughs> Okay. Could, could this maybe be connected to the sad unicorn in some way, you think? Mm. Most definitely. All right, then. Do, do you guys, do you want, do any of y'all, like, want any of this stuff? He, like, picks up the jug. <laughs> it's like, any of you want, any you want this? Uh, refreshments. Satiations. <laughs> oh, Terry says, no, I'm, I'm on the job. No, thank you. Yeah, ontology's going to take the jug away and say, you've had enough. And... <clears throat> See if she is there well, like water why, around? Why take? Why are they taking away my stuff? No, no, no have some I water. Wanted... Have some water. Here, have a drink. He does not. He does not understand what you're saying if you're not speaking Sylvan. <laughs> do you speak Elvish? I do. Okay, I'll try that. If you, yeah, he he understands what you're saying. He says back in like really slurred Elvish, like, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess water is cool. I don't have any though. Did you know that the body is like seventy percent water? You're just a... is my body 70% water and surely you're at least several percent alcohol by now uh... oh that's so clever hey hey this one's really funny ha 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 and then they and then they say um, so like yeah if you want to like come back in like further and I think we're like this way and he points further back down and the other two satyrs um, have fallen asleep <laughs> on the ground hey Brock bro bro goes over and like nudges his friend with a hoof bro uh -huh. gotta get up bro you gotta go oh okay yeah get Steve okay so uh, Brock Steve and uh, Ryan are the three satyrs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they, they begin following you into the forest. Um, so yeah, as you, as you head down, are there any questions you want to ask of the, uh, the, drunken, <laughs> the drunken trio? 
you oh actually and 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 sylvan you said earlier that something came around and like killed some of your friends like what's up with that bro uh yeah it was like the weirdest thing like normally you know we we have like the f late autumn harvest pool party and everyone comes like the naiads show up the dryads show up the, the 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 best unicorn ever larue shows up and does like a really sick cannonball but this time like in the pool like it was it was real messed up like someone put some dead bodies in it and that's like not fun you know that kind of like kills the vibe you know and then it got like dark and like instead of blood it was like ichor and stuff the, the bodies are real the, bad the bodies of the pool oh both it was like you know like when you like try to like layer two alcohols when you're making like one of those layered drinks and then like you like don't support in slow enough and it like gets all messed up and then next thing you go you got like a super curdled drink like that's what it was like but like worse and then you know instead of like a drink like some of the they were like dead friends and that's why you know we're like satyrs before haters um. Carlisle gives this information back to the rest of the group. Hmm. So, someone definitely just steezed their chill. So mm. the unicorn lives here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She totally lives here. She's like usually super chill and like down to party, but like now she's like not. She's like angry all the time. It tell me it's like a goth phase, but like I don't know. Like my friend, my friend, like Duke, he like became a goth for like a hot second. He wasn't like that. Wait, the unicorn's going through a goth phase? I don't think so. Like, I don't know when Duke went through his goth phase, he just like smudged a lot of eyeliner on and like dyed his fur black and sang a lot of emo songs and smoked a bunch of clothes and like that's not what larue does i mean like larue doesn't do any of that stuff oh what's yeah. larue doing larue's like going around like killing my friends and like being worshipped by cultists it's super weird oh yeah that's a bit beyond robert smith oh my gosh all right well let's go straighten this out yeah it's a super like hot topic in this part of the woods <laughs> Um, Usamir, can you make a um, a nature check for me? Yes, I can. Oh my god. Six. This is a forest. It's magical. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really ah, want so to nice to be see. out in the woods. <laughs> I for one am happy that we brought Utamir. <laughs> <laughs> Despite what the others say. <laughs> um, so as you head through to the um, the uh, the through the woods, the the moon is rising. The uh, the leaves are are now um, like they're now like gilded in silver instead of gold. As you you head through, and the uh, the 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 satyrs break into song again as they as they trudge through the foliage. And then suddenly you hear a <sighs> come through the woods. And on that note, let's take a quick break and we'll be back in five minutes. Okay. Go and stretch, get some water. Good <laughs> thing. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Dice Friends. And last we left our lovely adventurers, uh, they were in the forest with three completely wasted satyrs and they suddenly hear a snarl come from uh, a nearby shrubbery. Um, what would you all like to do? Uh, I, I would like to move to protect the tiny drunks. <laughs> the satyrs are just like, what? Oh. What? No, get behind my shield, you, you, you intoxicated things, you 
teenies, babies. <laughs> They're so young. They're almost too young to drink, probably. I'm like 50. <laughs> <laughs> what, you gonna card me? Like, do you need my ID? They, you know, they each produce, like, little satyr IDs. It don't, look, on bark. don't look like the dates have been changed. <laughs> Okay, make a make a, make an insight. No, make a perception check. Oh, or an intelligence check. All right, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take uh, uh, perception, uh, and I okay. got a nineteen. Uh these look legit. Oh, all right. Yeah, although uh, one of them does look a little smudged. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, Steve's looks a little smudged, and he he tries to fall over but doesn't. Um. But yeah, uh, so you do hear the snarl coming uh, basically from y'all's uh, left and emerging from the underbrush are, are four injured wolves and each of them come out and uh, they, they're, they're, their um, ears are back. Um, they are kind of low. They're, they're definitely um, have their body language and their bodies like lower to the ground as they slink out. And uh, the lead wolf, who is slightly larger, and uh, she's got a tip of. Uh, she looks like her tail looks like it's been dipped in white paint. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it doesn't look like it's actually been dipped in white paint, but it's just a white tip tail. She she comes forward. She's got um, wound marks all. They've all got wound marks all over their bodies. Oh no! And, uh, she comes forward, and she just kind of like snarls at you, but softly, just kind of showing her fangs as she starts like giving you all a wide berth she's like does she, so she looks real hurt maybe like they all look real hurt can uh, i I'd can like i to speak with animals yeah go for it uh, just gonna hunker down kind of closer to their level she's like what happened who are you udimir a druid oh. Here to deal with a unicorn problem. You are here to deal with those who have corrupted this forest? Of course. I'm sure that with your great powers, you must have sensed the corruption immediately upon entering this place. Uh, I was a little overwhelmed with some <laughs> satyrs. Body odor oh. is a lot. Yeah. I, they definitely have the beer sweats. I can smell it from here. I, I got you. Yeah. Well, I am Rat Tail, and these, this is my pack. We, we tried to fight off the cultists tonight, and uh, we, we barely escaped with our lives. We, we lost two of our pack. But uh, if you are looking to to get rid of them. We will assist you. Uh, perhaps you would like to give us one of the drunk ones to eat, and then we can perhaps uh, get get a little bit more sustenance and maybe a little more energy before we get back into the fray. Uh, um, can I cast Cure Wounds first level? Yeah, you can cast Cure Wounds. Uh, on uh, Ontology, Red go ahead. Oh, you were saying something? I was going to say, can I, can, I, can I try to heal a wolf if they're all hurt and friendly? Um, I mean, they're about as friendly as, as you can be, given that Utamir is doing a good job of talking to them. Yeah, if, if one of you would like to do um, a healing word, that's cool. They just got out of the fray. Now you're showing them how to save a life. <laughs> cool. Uh, what do you heal them for? Uh, uh, let's see. I cast cure wounds and i heal them for 1d8 plus 4 i actually forgot i had to roll for that ah uh, seven points of damage uh they you describe to me how you heal these poor puppers uh well uh let's see i have a little sa i have like a i'm gonna say that uh behind her shield ontology has a fanny pack that's filled with like granola bars and band-aids and all sorts of useful things that you just need when you're an eighth level character. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I'm i like, now hold on, this is gonna sting. And I put some polysporin on there and, you know, wrap it up. <laughs> uh, and they're they're hopefully looking good. Um, <laughs> you you cover them with some like, what are, the, I'm guessing the colors of your god are, are the colors of your, your characters? Yeah. Your characters. Yes. Yeah, so, so they're covered in like, 
gold and <laughs> red um, ace bandage. They get to pick the colors, actually, because that brings people joy, right? Would you like orange, yellow, or red? I have one for each. Um, I think dogs can see red, right? They can they can see red. All right, all right. They... Somebody somebody tell me in chat that <laughs> they can see red. So they all choose red because red looks real good. Perfect. <laughs> like yeah. All right, no more red bandages for the rest of the trip. So I hope nobody's disappointed. Yeah. They uh, they whimper and they nuzzle and lick you um, as you heal them. Aww. And uh, Aww. and uh, they I have applied they... the cure. Rat Tail uh, looks at um, Utamir and says, "All right, well, I guess we do not need to eat one of the the, the drunk ones, but uh, I we're, I can we're... ask if they'd be down for that." Like it might be a hard sell, but they might be willing. Uh, if you, I mean, we're not super hungry now that we've had the healing, but you know, uh, a roadside snack is never going to be one. Where are you taking this drunk, this this drunk luggage anyway? Uh, they said they live somewhere around here, but don't remember where. Oh, I think we're looking for a tree with a swimming pool. Oh, right. Well, we just came from the pool, but the tree is, that's a, the pool's a bit far off, uh, but we, we know of the tree of which you speak, so let us, let us go. Um, the, the, the wolves, they, they go around, they snuffle each of you, there's four of them, there's four of you, so each of them takes, uh, walks next to you, um, and, uh, they, and the rat tail, goes to Utamir because you can actually, they can actually talk to you. And, and she says, all right, well, follow me then. And um, so you are guided by the wolves, um, the like, like rather feral sheep dogs, the, the, the wolves keep the satyrs like from wandering off the path. And you eventually, uh, you ascend a gentle slope uh, where you behold an enormous maple tree. Um, and it is, it's a little bit like as big as like the tree of life at like Disney, in like the Disney parks. It's very, very large. And uh, the, the maple leaves are still in full uh, like fiery colors. And uh, the, the satyrs look up and they like, oh, hey, it's home. Oh, thanks, bro. This is amazing. Oh my God. And they immediately tear off hmm. into the forest. Udemir. And, uh, Run to the tree, oh. uh, Udamir. You knew, you knew that those uh, those wolves weren't trying to lead us into a trap. How did you? How, how could you tell? Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> what made them so trustworthy? I. They were very injured. They had very nothing to lose. I. Th the fact that they asked before killing any of us was a, a clear sign uh, that the speaking was working. Wow. An honest she-wolf. I guess the tips don't lie. <laughs> um, uh, Terry, the... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Terry would like to pose a question to the group. And Terry says, are, um, are we in a book? This is something that has been weighing on Terry's mind as soon as they step through the portal. Are we in a book... Are we now characters in a novel? What what does is anyone does anyone know where we are? I'm just I know that's kind of a big question, but we'd step through a magical portal and then talk to some lovely characters, but I don't know what's happening. Where where are we? You know, as much as I personally have a vested interest in describing the nature of reality, um uh <laughs> I I don't know. I thought you knew, Terry. I have no idea. I don't know if any of this is real. Are these all characters in a book? Should I care about their feelings? Could I kill yeah. one of them? And is that is that an ethical choice that, that happens if I kill a, an imaginary character in a book? Oh no, Terry has book madness. <laughs> like... <laughs> Terry, Terry, you you look behind you. Um, you hear a little voice um, <laughs> coming from your pocket, and a little squirrel pops out with a little waistcoat and says, "Well, I don't know about any of this, but y'all seem pretty cool to me. I guess I could be a character, but you know, what does it really matter if we're characters in the book as long as we're living our best lives, huh?" All right, this huh? is what I mean. And Terry huh? takes the squirrel and snaps huh? the squirrel's neck <gasps> and says, "Now, was that a terrible thing to do? I don't know." Maybe it was. 
it's uh it's a mystery this is what i'm saying like is are we are we here to help help lovely wooden creatures uh, uh woodland creatures or are we here just to shelve a book is that all this is does the unicorn exist is the unicorn we're going to be helping just a fictional version of itself and there's an actual unicorn that wrote the book uh, elsewhere these are important questions i think we need to know uh, terry okay terry please roll please I guess roll initiative oh. against the squirrel. I'm just going to have you just kill a squirrel. I think the squirrel's going to get a chance. I mean, I could kill a squirrel easily. I don't know why Terry yes, has to true. roll, but I will. I will. You're you're the you're the okay, god roll, of this roll universe. Check. I have to roll, roll a strength okay. check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or dexterity, whichever no, one. I'm just like trying to bend the squirrel, and it just uh, it overpowers him. <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Let's do strength here. What is my strength? I think I have a strength of negative 110. What do I have here? Okay, I have a negative one to strength. That is a three. Uh, uh, you you try to... Uh, you The squirrel's just like, oh, okay, I guess you're picking me up. Now. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Nope, nope, nope. The squirrel just like puts up two, two little hands in like a cufflink shirt mm -hmm. and, and, and just pushes your hand away. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense because... You, even though you're a gnome, like you should be easily be able to just overpower a tiny squirrel. Mm. Um, but and yet, and yet, here we are. Ah. Um, uh, question for Michelle: Did yes. did the book come with us? Do we still have the? No, book? the book did not okay. come with you. And uh, this has been a normal forest. There's no like swirly madness in the sky. Oh, uh, why don't each of you make an Arcana check? All right. Okay. 26. Nine. Nice. Nine. 16. Uh, Carla, you look up in the sky and you see some of the stars coming together into uh, words that say, and then Terry Fizzlewit attempted to break the neck of, of Chester Fluffybottom. Mm. Chester was able to <laughs> push back against Terry's weak fingers. Mm. Uh, yep, the constellations are narrated in our every actions. I knew it! I knew well, it! Now, that is not to say that our actions within this book do not matter, Terry. Fuzzy Bottom has a name. Fuzzy Bottom has a right to exist. Right, Fuzzy Bottom? That's that's right. It's it's Fluffy Bottom, actually. Chester Fluffy Bottom. Uh, my apologies. It's hard to oh, read that's backwards. All right. That's fine. That's true. That's true. Well, um, I guess you're here. Um, I'm going to leave you alone now. And he like hops off of Terry's wait, hand wait. and before yeah, before that's... he goes, I'm gonna be like, wait, Mister uh, Mister Fluffy Bottom, you're the most co you're the most cogent in creature we've encountered so far. Uh, there's been some sort of birthday massacre, blood everywhere. Uh, you know, I am really. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's going on with the unicorn? Where is it? Um, well, it is in further in, in the center of the forest at the sacred pool. Um, but why don't we talk to uh, my friend about it? Here, follow me. And it scampers uh, towards the, uh, a couple of the wolves, like, try to, like, half-heartedly bite at the squirrel, but Fluffy Bottom's just like, ha-ha, nah. -uh. And um, you, you walk to the massive uh, maple tree. And as you approach the clearing in the tree, um, the uh the the tree actually the bark it it separates it opens its eyes and then she speaks to you why hello there pardon my rudeness for being asleep it's been a long time since i've seen travelers like you in these parts are you here to purify the pool of eternal spring yeah can and you point in whatever direction it is. Oh, it's it's that way. Okay, thank and, you. And, and oh, before you leave, I see you brought my my satyrs back. Thank you very much. They're kind of weird, but you know, I love them. You can call me Fainor. Oh, nice to meet you, Fainor. And I like pat a burl, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Oh, can you just scratch oh. that a little bit? Oh, that's oh, very absolutely. itchy. Oh, thank you. Get oh. in there. All right. If you, uh, so the the tree reaches down a very large branch and just like says, um, "Well, since I can't move from here, but uh, since you're heading out, 
Um, here is a, a few things that the last group left behind before all this went down. And uh, you see at the very base of uh, Feanor, um several wooden vials. Uh, you see four of them. Oh, how convenient. One each. Uh, well... <laughs> When you say left behind, do you mean like, oh, we had to go in a hurry? Well, you just hold on to this for us, like, you know, change in airport situation, or that they are no longer with us in a spiritual kind of way. <laughs> I think both. It's been a long time. Am oh. I supposed to just drink this now? If you want, I don't think you should. I think you should wait until you have to go up against, you know, Luru, now that Luru's kind of weird and emo now. How do you wish for us to subdue this Luru? There seems to be a history with you all, and uh, frankly, I, I feel that just murdering an old friend would be quite uncouth if you haven't tried the uh, <clears throat> power of friendship. Oh, well, uh, I, I like how you think. Uh, Chester Fluffy Bottom, are you quite... Are you are you there, friend? And Chester says, "Uh huh, I'm here." Uh, well, would you would you mind letting them know what happened? Uh huh, I can let them know what happened. I saw it, and then they tried to kill me, and I ran away, and now I'm here, mm. so I can tell you what happened. Um, so Chester uh scurries down and like sits in a little branch and says, "Well." You see, what happened was that, uh, so LaRue is actually the guardian of this whole forest, just kind of of all forests in general on this plane, and, um, as it turns out, the, the cult of, this, this cult, I don't know what they are, but they, they like, they do sure like killing folks, uh, but not, you know, folks like me, like the animal and the forest folk, um, and meanwhile, the, the, the wolves have just kind of, like, gone off and like they're sleeping in a pile next to the tree um, <laughs> um and <laughs> it's a group of wolves called a pile I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a pile of wolves yeah. udamir's just looking at the pile thinking about it it's been a long day maybe it's nap time uh if you want to take a short rest it's totally cool um, but Chester um, does go on and he says, well, as it turns out, I think they're like part of this god cult called uh, the cult of Malar. Like he's like the hunt god, but you know, like hunting, you know, it's important to like help control population. But like he just kind of went like too far and LaRue was like, I'm not about that. And then the cultists were like, but we are. And they did this blood ritual in the pool, and now, now she's like goth, and it's super awkward. Mm. And then they keep killing my friends and putting them in the pool. Ugh. Nothing's yeah. worse than a funeral for a friend. Do, do you know how we might purify a, this pool? I think you gotta smack them. Perfect. That's a simple you plan. Smack them real good. Yeah. Because uh, they don't, well, you know, like, he and a bunch of folks, like, uh, the satyrs tried to bribe him with a bunch of mead, and they were like, no. And then, you know, other folks tried to talk to them, and they were like, no. And then we tried singing, and that didn't work either. And you know when singing doesn't work, there's only one thing left to do. You gotta smack them. Mm. And that's all? I, I think so. I think uh, because, you know, the way that Malar works is that, you know, as a god, he, like, really, really respects strength and, you know, the weak need to be called and only the strong can survive. So if you can, if you can smack their people into perhaps death, um, then I think that that would help him perhaps realize he's not the, not the big strong one around the area and then Luru can come back. Hmm. Hmm. All right. I have, a well, I have a question for you, Chester. I don't like you. I wouldn't you either. To kill me. I don't, th in fairness, I don't think you're really alive. I think you're an idea. You're a simu magical simulation of an adorable talking squirrel. Shh. So here, 
Don't, no, don't no. put that mojo in his head. Ontology, this is important. These are big questions that need to be answered. I, I don't understand why I have to be self-aware. Like, even if I am, you know, I'm having a good life. I understand that. But th there are big, if I'm going to go out and kill a bunch of people, I need to know what their lives are worth. <laughs> if they are just ideas in the mind of an author, that I'm kind of okay with that. For instance, if I left this book and just whited out the name Chester Fluffybottom, would you cease to exist? Is, it, is this happening in every single book in Candlekeep or just all the enchanted ones? What's a book? Oh, um, uh, uh, uh. Surely, as a librarian, you're not going around and whiting out problem areas, are you? No, but it's, I mean, I also don't go around killing squirrels, typically. But if it's an, is it possibly an imaginary squirrel? It's just, it's, this is a very baffling place. And I will help you. You seem nice enough. I'm going to help you. I just want to understand how this place works. That's all I need. Ontology, um, based off of your nat 20 earlier, you remember, like, this this is a real unicorn and this is a real these are real gods hmm. and whatever is happening here probably has real repercussions yeah all right i will relay that information to terry okay uh, but it's all yeah. written being written in a book in the sky look we all have to deal with brand new experiences let's come on get up kids let's go purify a pool uh, Cha -cha. do we need like a large stick or something to fish the bodies out with or like a net um, yeah, probably, probably. I think so. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, by the way, if you, if you want to, um, head over this way, there's, um, a menagerie, like one of the, one of the hunt folks were, um, like she was just grabbing folks and putting them in like basket, like big, big baskets. I think they're called cages and preparing them to be sacrifice to the pool um so i think if you go that way you know you'll you'll find maybe some other folks um who have also been captured oh no all right and they can maybe tell you what's going on all right let's go okay ontology's uh, so impatient go... so you take a short rest <laughs> um and yeah sorry carla Okay, great. So you you walk on. Uh, do you want the wolves to come with you? Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. If they want, if they want to come with us, they can come with us. I'm not inviting them. <laughs> They've seen enough trouble today. They they can come with you if you would like wolf friends. But if you don't want Rat Tail and her pack to come with, that's also totally cool. Oh, but I was looking forward to a wolf parade. Okay, the wolves come <laughs> along. <laughs> The wolves, they see, they, uh, originally they, um, they, she, she like opens her eyes. She looks at you and they don't really actually No, Google. I'm not talking to you. Please stop. <laughs> um, the, the wolves, they open their eyes and one looks at you and they look at ontology's like sad, sad pouty face. And then rat tail stands up, shakes like her whole coat and, uh, <laughs> and like walks over to ontology and makes it makes a note to like have the rest of the um the party come with so you are now followed by four wolves okay my speak with animals only lasted 10 minutes so yeah you have no idea but you can kind of tell like... i don't know if you either you want to roll animal handling yeah, like you can i can tell you what you they're know, with the wolves. they'd probably appreciate it if you offered yourself as sustenance to the pack uh i rolled uh i rolled animal handling and i got a 22 so can uh, I'm I'm can I say I, I understand that they're are hungry and I give them some beef jerky out of my fanny pack. <laughs> oh, they they really appreciate the beef jerky. You can tell like they're not going to attack you. They're just sort of like, I mean, you can tell that they're they're intelligent. They're going to you're you're both aimed in the same direction and they're going to help out. Yeah. And plus, you healed them, so you're nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna. I, I promise. If there's any bad guys, you should bite their bums. Uh, she goes. <laughs> And with that, you you head out, and the night is um, fully on. Um, fully, the, the moon is fully in the sky. It is fully night, and you come upon. Um, actually, if uh, you can, um, it, Paul, if you can pull up the hag's hovel. Well, that sounds nice. <laughs> yes, it's alliterative and all that stuff. So uh, you come upon it from um, the 
uh, the West. Uh, and the first thing you see is the Hag Shack, which is not like the Love Shack. It is not a Too little late. old place where anyone can get together. <laughs> Um, in any Why is meaningful there way. everywhere? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just done up in mid-century modern, like Robin's Egg Blue. You see, like a it's like a diner. It's guarded by <laughs> abandoned milkshakes are everywhere. It's guarded by a giant stone crustacean. Oh my goodness! Yes, <sighs> love it. So um, you see um, this uh, incredibly old ha uh, shack in front of all of you. Um, there is. It's it's uh, definitely kind of like made out of salvaged wood, not super well put together. Um, H1, where you see right there, that's a dry well. Mm. It is um, doesn't look too good. You see a bucket kind of on a rusty chain. Uh, the chain is partially broken. Um, and as you venture into that area, you also see what almost look like barracks. Um, and you can see there's like a bunch of stably looking things inside, but you're not really sure. You'd have to get in there in order to actually see what's going on. Um, so which would you like to investigate first? Are we closer to the well? Um, yeah, you've entered. So you've entered right next to H2. If you want to head through the brush, uh, you can go towards the well if you want. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to not be too, um, I'm gonna try to be stealthy, even though that's really not my forte, but I'm gonna go and peek over at that well before I, like, do some burglary. Okay, uh, roll me a, let's see. Okay, roll me a stealth check. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, oh, well, I have, I have disadvantage on stealth because my dexterity is really low, so I rolled a four. But my high roll was a five, so I was going to fail no matter what. <laughs> so describe to me um, how you approach the well. <laughs> well, uh, that's where I'm going. And <laughs> I, I do that thing where it's like, all right, I'm going to really like get, I'm going to just like crouch down, get low through the underbrush, move like an animal, really get in there. And I'm going to immediately just put my hand down on like something large and thorny. And I'm going to be like, ah, and that's going to be super loud and just echo through the entire area. Uh, and I'm going to go, oops. Um, so as you uh, stick your head over, a big tentacle, like two big tentacles come out and grab you. Ah! And I need everyone to roll initiative. Okay. That's a four for Terry. Okay. Uh, perfect. We're already at four. Mission tracker. Um, everybody else? 11. Okay. 14. Uh, and Udemir? 21. Ooh. All right. Uh, Udemir, you are first. Um, so you see, uh, basically, your, your new friend, Ontology, uh, peer over the side of the well, and two gray, um, kind of rubbery-looking worm-like tentacles, like, come out of the well and just sort of, like, like encircle her and try to pull her in. Uh... Wow. I have, like, nothing for this. It's amazing. I... Uh... Magic stone in a sling. Uh, you could try to like do you do an arm arm attack or try to like smack it or something. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm using a sling attack with a magic stone. Okay, cool. Go ahead and um, roll me that attack. All right. Oops. Sorry. Attack. <laughs> Natural twenty. Twenty six. Nice. Okay. Roll me that um, damage. Uh. Is it double dice? Yeah, it's double double dice because you rolled a critical okay. hit. Sorry, one second. Twenty. You um you 
smack off one of the tentacles and it goes flying and you hear um something whatever it is inside the well uh make a noise as it roars out in pain and as it uh goes ahead and then you see a beak kind of emerge um and like it's this sort of weird like if you think of like a sandworm but instead of like the 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 circular concentric like teeth it's just like a big kind of like rubbery gray beak with tiny little eyes on the side garbage disposal it, it, yeah it definitely comes up it's a gar you're fighting a garbage disposal um <laughs> with tentacles and it comes out and uh, makes a very unhappy noise. Um, it's definitely quite bloodied by that experience. So next up is Carlisle. Awesome. Uh, now that it has emerged from the uh, the, the the well, <clears throat> uh, Carlisle says, I wish there were three of those so I could say, well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but instead... <laughs> Uh, Carlisle is going to um, cast Lightning Lore. Okay. Uh, so I need uh, you to make a strength saving throw. All right. Uh, 15. Um, that does not make it. It's a 13. What happens? Uh, Carlisle uh, puts out a, a, an arm uh, and an eel uh, comes on out, uh, wraps around the Grick, gives it a shocking little grass for 11 points of... Uh, shock damage uh and i pull it close to me um you uh you do that the uh the eel wraps around uh the tentacle um and pulls it away from ontology ontology you're uh you're able to breathe finally <laughs> after what just happened and uh yeah you pull kind of like popping um an oyster or like a, a crab or a shell you pop this grick alpha out of the well and it slithers out this large like 30 foot long creature just slides out of the well as you uh bring it out with your lightning war um cool nice any other things you'd like to do uh i use my bonus action to say i got it nice all right, next is um, the wolves, which I'm just going to roll all together. So the wolves, uh, they see this whole thing come out. Um, it attacked their favorite person within the party. They're one of their favorite people within the party. Um, Udemir is also the other favorite person in the party because you can actually talk to them. Ontology is also one of the favorite people because they... Because I gave them beef. Them. Wow. Yeah, you gave Second them beef. favorite. Beefy wow. treats. <laughs> You're still one of their favorites. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and roll attacks on this thing from the wolves. And they get advantage because pack tactics. Okay, one misses. One hits. One misses. One misses. Okay, so half of them hit. Um, and let's see, I'm going to go ahead and roll damage. They're going to go ahead and bite. So that's that's hard to hit. Two D four plus two piercing. On six. Um and eight. So that's fourteen damage altogether, bringing it down. Um, you see uh, two of the wolves lunge forward. Rattail manages to get a grip on one of the, um, the just grip on that big rubbery gray looking body and rips off a chunk of a gristly gray looking meat. And uh, one of her pack mates also does, but the other ones, uh, it's just thrashing around so much that they're not able to get a good enough grip on, on the, uh, the, the grick. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and run over to Ontology Jones. All right. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to cast, how injured does this Grick look? It looks pretty bad. Interesting. It's, it's, been, it's been electrified. It's, Udemir managed to thwack an arm off. It's got two wolves stuck to it. Um, Oh. By stuck, I mean the wolves are fighting them. All right. Well, in that case, I'm just going to try and uh, I'm just going to uh, try and uh, attack it. Um, well, actually, let's see. Can I use channel divinity to make my big mace a sacred mace so I can extra smack it? Yeah, you can. Sm you can get a big 
holy smack. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna channel divinity, uh, and uh, to give myself a sacred weapon, uh, and uh, then I'm going to try to smack it with my mace. All right. All right. Does I assume a twenty six is gonna hit? Oh yeah, that most definitely hits the garbage disposal. All right. How much damage do I do? All right. So you make a. Uh, all right. Um, uh, let's see. So. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I've never done this before because I don't have, I've never, this is the first time I've done it. So I think I just, yeah. So I'm going to hit it. I'm going to roll some damage. And it also is going to emit a bright light for a while. So we can't possibly lose it, even if it goes back down the well. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and oh, I'm going to deal nine damage to it. Wapow! Uh, you smack it. You smack it real good. Um, it, uh, you basically, you guys, you lunge forward, your, um, your mace glows with a golden light and you, um, knock off, uh, the other tentacle and now it's just a big writhing thing, um, on the ground. <laughs> um, Carla, like you're still holding it. There's wolves trying to bite it. It's, it's just a hot mess. And with that, is there anything else you'd like to do, uh, ontology? Um, uh, I mean, I think uh, uh, stand triumphantly and enjoy not being grappled by it, but... <laughs> nice. All right, the alpha, the Grick alpha is going to go next. Um, it is not enjoying the fact that it is being held uh, on a... Uh, by this lightning lure. So it's going to try to the chomp Carlisle. So Carlisle does a... Um, does a 25 hit. Yes. All right. Um, let's see. Um, thirteen piercing damage. Ooh. Um, it's going to also try to uh, thwack you with its tail butt. Not the butt. It's a butt attack. <laughs> um, I'm guessing that a twenty-four hits. Uh, it would. Uh, mm -hmm. except after this uh, second attack, the eel that was uh, grabbed on lets go, and it blocks with a shield. Nice. All right. In that case, it um, so it turns around, tries to smack its its uh, gray wormy butt into you, and then the um, your eel friend, uh, your magical eel friend, create it gets real big and just goes nope. <laughs> in front of the uh, big wormy It does butt. a no in front of me. <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Uh, next, Terry. You've got a big worm thing. Okay. Normally, in a battle like this, Terry would be in a combat crouch. The sort of, you know, sort of ready, you know, two arms up, rifling through spells in his head. But as this is going on, he's just sat on the ground and is watching this fight dispassionately, picking grass. And, and he realizes it's his turn to go and says, and he says, you know what, squid thing, whatever you are, you could just be my imagination or the imagination of whoever this author is. Am I in the book now? Am I being written about? Am I as fictional as you are? I don't know. Should I care more about your life than our charming little fluffy squirrel friend? I don't know. But what I do know right now is that you're going to die. And I cast... <laughs> um, I cast... Terry's become a nihilist! It's, this has really screwed up with his... Screwed his head up. It's, he, this, he's not taking it well. He doesn't know that if somebody burned the book right now, if, all, if him and all his friends would die, he doesn't know. It's very terrible. He's in a bad place. So he is going to just roll a d20 and see if I can hit this thing with Ray of Frost. <laughs> uh, that is a 17 to hit. A uh, 17 does not hit. Oh, okay. So even wow. worse, he tries and misses and goes, doesn't matter. Never mattered. Never mattered. And starts picking grass again. Just sits right back down. The three of you see Terry going through essentially a midlife crisis in the middle of this combat <laughs> as he half-heartedly just like shoots off a, a, a spell and it just sort of grazes off the Grick. The Grick doesn't care and <laughs> it just 
<laughs> continues to writhe and continues to attack all of y'all. But <laughs> uh, um, and so with that, Udamir, what are you thinking as you see this go down <laughs> before you uh, before you attack? That was a pretty feeble attack. Gotta be honest. <laughs> I tried. Uh, That's the thing. That's the thing, Udamir. I really tried, and I failed. All right, so I'm going to, I guess, grab a bit of wolf fur and pull out a glass rod from my bag and just kind of rub them together and just point the glass uh, rod at the uh, creature. And it's going to make uh, a dex save. Uh, the the wolf or the the, the crick? The crick. <laughs> okay. I was no, I'm attacking like... wolves now. Everything's everything's broken. <laughs> It, it fails. I got a natural. Um, it's a wisdom save. Uh, dex. A dex save. It got a six, which I'm guessing is not going to no. do anything. No. Uh, so a <laughs> stroke of lightning <laughs> forms at the end of the rod and blasts into the grick. For a moment, Udamir turns into a um, a uh, hard. What is it? Um, heavy metal poster yeah. <laughs> just holding up the rod and the lightning shooting down and there's like wolves around her just like looking up like <laughs> oh and uh the lightning courses down into this um into this grip for how much damage 35. you as the lightning courses down into um this the the wolves all howl in victory and um in respect for your net your nature powers uh, as you conduct this electricity into this worm which very quickly becomes a big honking point of uh, pile of fried calamari but land calamari because it's it's a worm so uh you're out of combat um and the wolves like all turn to Terry and like in in a in a there's like a rat tail makes a it, 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 like makes a snarl which in um if you don't really even need to cast speak with animals but you can tell it's like get your head in the game. I see. And Terry takes that growl uh -huh. takes that growl to mean that and he looks at the wolves and he turns to the groups to see they know I know. They know I've caught on. See? <laughs> They chuff at you. <laughs> does the does the calamari beast smell good? No, it does not Aww. smell good. It smells like bad sewer, like burnt sewer. Burnt sewer. Ugh. Okay. <gasps> Darn. I was hoping our I was hoping it would be a tasty treat for our uh, for our friends <laughs> with four feet, but uh, no, not the case. They might roll in it, you know. Yeah. Well, whatever makes them happy. They're not my dogs. I don't need to wash them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, all four of you just saw Terry like go through go through that. And so, would any of you like to uh, um, look at the the stables, or do you want to proceed on to the pool? Uh, I'm gonna let other people who are much stealthier than me lead the way. Uh, learning after that experience. Are we aware of the name of the location? No. Okay. I'm gonna we go check told over that, into the like there was someone here with information. Oh. Well I'm gonna check the house. Um Yeah, maybe try uh, knocking or something. Oh yeah. Um you knock on the door. Um do and would any of you like to make a perception check? Mm, yeah, I uh, 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 12. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, eight. sure. 17. Ah. All right. Uh, Carl, are you rolling or no? Focus on knocking. Okay. Terry, um, you hear amidst the knocking a little <laughs> noise. Mm-hmm. And uh, you you see that the wolves have clustered around the door and are like pawing at it. Hello, we killed your squid. We should probably exchange information. Uh, I'm I'm hearing some muffled whimpering inside. Um, I don't I don't know what it means. I don't something something untoward is going on in there. I think. Mm. You got a bad feeling about this, Terry? Very bad. Carl Lyle knocks again. Hello, are you being held captured? Mm. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Terry, mm-hmm. one moment. Can you scoot up for just a... Uh, Carlisle yeah. stands back and uh, charges in to bash down the door. Okay. Uh, make me a strength check. You got it. 17. Uh, the door is gone. <laughs> You you punch the door, the door disintegrates uh-huh. under, just turns to splinters. And as the four of you uh, look in, that the wolves immediately rush in. And uh, you see that they uh, are wagging their tails and they're, uh, they, they are licking the faces of what look like two dryads uh, that are tied up on the floor. Um, inside the the um, ha- uh, the hut, you see like a bed, a scratched up table, a really bad looking wooden shelf with some stuff on it. There's a fireplace, um, but yeah, there are two dryads on the floor. Um, their their green like hair uh, looks pretty disheveled. They don't look super healthy, and they are bound and gagged. The wolves are around them, like licking them and like making happy happy wolf noises. Uh, Carl Lyle immediately begins to uh, untie them and ungag them. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is this is my uh, oh my god, this is like amazing that like y- you came. Oh, what's your name? I'm Trakyla and uh, this is my sister Argentia. I am uh, Carl Lyle Hell Daniels, uh, Duke of Eels. Uh, that's Ordemir, speaker to wolves. That's Ontology Jones, bringer of joy. My friend Terry Fizzlewitz, uh usually is a bit more chipper. Seems to be going through quite of a bit of a dark patch right now. But uh, I hear that's uh, been going on around here lately. And as you say that, Terry's just looking into a mirror on the wall and, and running, his, <laughs> running. Is he cutting his hair? <laughs> Elliot Smith is playing in the background. <laughs> the dryads and the wolves both look at Terry and are like, is he okay? <laughs> Terry's just expressing himself and that's okay. Oh, that's, uh, that's okay. Um, well, in that case, um, well, thank you. Uh, there's actually a, so we were brought here by, um, this, this terrible, woman named Lenadry Staggersoul and she she found us here. She was hurting us to fuel her magic. She, she's at, there's actually a bunch of animals. I mean we can take care of them now um that you've un, unbound us, but like the the pool of eternal spring is nearby and we, we can tell you where to go, but just just heads up, there's actually a bunch of cultists around it and and they've got LaRue like really believing in calling the weak unnecessarily it's just the worst and like oh my god so so awkward hmm cultist you say yeah well yeah the worst of the um, oh sorry they're they're like they follow them they're like the minions of malar hmm. um, god of the hunt yeah he's kind of the worst the worst cold i ever faced was for a bunch of cerulean mollusk and after that, yeah. I no longer fear the Reaper. That's amazing. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, Malar, first, what we noticed when he first came to this forest, like, dozens of eggs went missing every morning. Like, five dozen eggs, uh, four dozen eggs, and they made five dozen eggs. And then he, they apparently got really, really big, like the size of a barge. And they're just, it's a whole thing. And now he's just hurting everyone and making everyone just hurl the animals and but but go you should go here and um was anyone hurt in the fight i don't think anyone was actually hurt in the fight right oh yeah um she presses uh oh. a an arm uh she she holds uh she like gives you a she's like can i give you a hug uh, yeah, uh, uh, or a handshake uh, carl uh just uh, sure i guess if, you, if that's cool with you i mean i oh okay I'll just put an arm on your shoulder. Uh, and so she puts an arm on your shoulder and you're healed uh, to full. He, Carlisle turns into polka dots and then blends into the surrounding of the house. Oh, well, he disappeared. This is super awkward. Well, okay. Um, 
good luck. The the pool is right over there. Um, uh, she points off. There's a path leading down, um, you know, to the south. So if you want to, just go that way. Thanks. Um, yeah. Uh, do you want the wolves to continue um, with you, or do you want them to stay here? Uh, maybe the wolves can help out their friends and stuff like that now. Okay. So um, the the um, rat tail. And her pack uh, leap up on all of you, except for Carl, because they can't find you. Uh, <laughs> and they, they, they leap on Terry and Ontology and Utamir and, like, do friendly licks and nuzzles. And we're like... <laughs> and uh, they, uh, they, bound, they bound away with the naiads to the, uh, the stable area where you hear, like, celebratory hoots and whistles and howls as uh, animals are set for you see like a hawk and an owl just burst out of there and then like several deer emerge from the the stables all right um, bye wolf yeah. alice i named my wolf alice oh. bye <laughs> they, they have names uh, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> i mean i can't speak animal so yeah So, um, I guess you proceed to the Pool of Eternal Spring. So, if you can, if Paul, you can pull up the Pool of Eternal Spring. Okay, we're going to um, ignore the 500 feet division. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, with that, you as you come upon this glade, you can see, you can smell the pool before you see the pool. And you can smell the cultists before you see the cultists. As you walk deeper into the forest, the full moon in the sky, um, you, you, the, the nice, like, foresty smells, like that of, like, dirt and... Um, you know, mulch, just like clean, natural smells, uh, give way to rotting flesh and like dank water. Um, the smell of burnt things, burnt leather, burnt flesh. And you eventually see um, in the woods a, um, a crackling fire uh, with several cultists around it as they... Um, sit there um, consuming what looks like something, a pile of something. And what they are eating, you'll have to find out when we come back from break. <gasps> Do we have to? <sighs> yeah, you have to. <laughs> you can make some chat if you want to guess what they're eating. That's cool. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Dice Friends, where we will now figure out what these cultists are eating at their... <sighs> At their campfire. It's McDonald's. <laughs> Who <isn't> knows? It? <laughs> Who knows? It's just a pile of chicken sandwiches <laughs> from Popeye's. <laughs> just really badly burnt chicken sandwiches. Explains the burnt smell, yeah. Yeah, just oh, so bad. Like those 11 secret herbs and spices are just mangled by that heat. Um, so actually what they are eating as you get closer... Um, and in the sky, you actually all notice that the uh, there's like red lightning um, starting to emerge. Like you see, like more, uh, just a, when you were back with the not with the dryads, like the sky looked clear, and you could see like the word constellations in the sky. Uh, but as you approach the pool, um, you can see that more storm clouds have gathered. Red lightning has emerged, and yeah, there's these. There's these terrible, terrible smells. And you, yeah, you see uh, a bunch of, uh, you see six werewolves um, half transformed, hunched over, each of them uh, with muzzles, um, muzzles like long muzzles, long sharp teeth, but they still have like taloned furry hands as they pick up what look like um, parts of animals, <gasps> um, different animals, just torn apart and uh, piled together in a big heap next to this campfire and uh they are um they they gorge upon these various body parts and eventually they put their muzzles they point their bloodied muscles to the sky and growl um 
Water into blood, earth into bones. And uh, they, um, yeah, they they continue to uh, nom on this, and then they, as they uh, do this, um, another of the werewolves, one of the six, uh, grabs the discarded body parts, uh, lopes over to the pool, and throws it in, and you see that this pool. Um, is just even you can tell um, actually uh, uh, somebody make me a religion a nature check a religion or a nature, nature. check religion 20. Uh, t- 20 but not nat Udemir this to your druid senses is a complete desecration of the natural flow of, of of what the world, the natural world should be. It is an abomination. It is an aberration. Someone, these cultists have completely defiled um, what was supposed to be a place of rest, a place of renewal, a place of purity and of eternal youth and celebration. Um, instead, it has become essentially as desecrated and corrupt and toxic as i don't know a new jersey toxic dump pile it's it's pretty bad it's that bad uh if Um, if the 500 uh foot gap isn't there like how far are we from the water um you are about i would say if we remove that gap um you're about 50 feet from the water and let's say that you've approached from the north and you're in that thicket um right above the uh, little tents in the campfire where uh, the werewolves are eating from their really sordid buffet. Um, Ontology, you sense deep, deep chaotic evil uh, coming from this whole place, but emanating mostly from that pool. I Um, don't like that. You also get the feeling like this has been desecrated. I'm all down for and, chaos, but this is not my speed. I don't like it. Yeah. Udemir, can we trust those wolves? No. Mm. Noted. Uh, I would like to take this time to uh, summon my bonded weapon. Okay. Uh, and a battle axe in, that looks more eels with like a trident tip appears. Uh, are you are you for eels, Carlisle? <laughs> Do you have to apologize to Miss Jackson? <laughs> Carlisle is not for eels. <laughs> for real. <laughs> for real. Thank you. I just need to clarify that for myself personally. So as you do so, um, you see that uh, the as the uh, the last uh, so that wolf lopes off tosses the bones in the pool and uh, the other werewolves um half again half in their like half humanoid half wolf form um gather the rest of their um terrible feast and they bring it over and they also chuck it in the pool chanting water into blood earth into bones and a bolt of red lightning splits the sky and strikes the surface of the pool and steam hisses and erupts from the pool a sulfurous bloody smell um as emerging from the pool um it's uh glowing red eyes um emaciated black frame um dark dripping mane and tail um and a red glowing horn the corrupted avatar of larue appears at the edge of the pool and uh, it uh, looks around and it, you hear um, in your mind, yes, you have summoned me. And so what would you all like to do? Uh, I would like to cast magic weapon on my mace. Now, okay. Now it's a, it's a magic weapon. Uh, so I get plus one for attack and damage. Uh. Okay. Do any of you make a move, any movements towards? Because at this point, the um, the avatar is in the pool, and the werewolves are around the pool. Uh, um, so about fifty feet away from you. Uh, how many werewolves? 
there are six werewolves. Werewolves, not swearwolves. Thank you very much. They're swearwolves. Uh, they are swearwolves. They are incredibly <clears throat> foul mouthed. They're saying all kinds of things that we are bleeping out. Babe, uh, I'd like uh, to cast a big spell, but I don't ooh. know if Terry wants to do anything first. I don't have to move closer to the pool. I'm already um, in range. Yeah. If any of you want to make an attack, then we'll go to initiative, but I'm just giving y'all the opportunity to, if you want, stealth up on these folks. Mm -hmm. mm. Carlisle. Terry. Oh, sorry. Go to oh, you. No, you, you, you can go if you like. Uh, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll go. Uh, Terry. Uh, yes. Um, Terry is very aware that he's inside of a book. And if he could get outside of a book, he could just rewrite what's happening to the story. Is there any, is there any way to leave right now? Is Terry's first question. Is there any way to get out of this place right now so I can be on the outside and just rewrite the book to a nice ending? Do you have Dimension Door? No. Um, roll an intelligence check for me with advantage. You got it. That is an 18. Here is what Terry realizes uh, based upon what he's known, what the, the knowledge he has accrued in Candlekeep and the behavior of the book before he entered it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that Candlekeep is full of mysterious magical items, uh, mostly books, sometimes scrolls, sometimes other things, sometimes tablets. Now, although these are written items, these are objects that have been, um, you know, they they are created by someone. That doesn't necessarily mean that um, that is simply all they are based upon your adventures, you realize that in a lot of ways, some of these books, especially if knowledge equals power, and you accrue that much power in one place, you begin to start warping space and time. Mm -hmm. So it is entirely possible that uh, given that, because uh, time equals money, money equals power, power is knowledge, um, using this simple transitive property, um, Terry comes to the realization that he, he can actually affect real world things if this, through books like this. And that seems to be what's going on here. This book is a concentration of power and knowledge and has ties to greater things ahead. So it's almost like a microcosm of a larger battle, but it is still real and it's here. Okay. And I and I don't know how to leave. <laughs> you uh, get the feeling that um, there is this. You are in a story, and how does a story resolve with an ending? Sure. Yeah. You have to end the story. Okay. And there's no and uh, and so I, I take that Terry does not know how to leave, uh, other than carrying on with the narrative. Yeah, there, there's only one way because it's the power of stories, uh, and stories need to have an ending. That's what they all have to have in order for any for it to be re to be releasing anyone. Mm -hmm. And since you're all characters within this book. And but also real people. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only way you can leave. All right. Without like dimension door or something, unless you can escape to another plane right now. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, uh, ter Terry, seeing that there's no other option but to killing all of these people in order to end the story, <laughs> goes, "Let's uh, let's wrap this up, folks." And then and warms up his hands and uh, goes, "Who wants to? Who wants to knock the crap out of these guys? Who wants to go first? I do. Okay." Uh, all right. All right. So do any, okay, well, okay, in that case, let's roll initiative. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do some quick stuff. Terry, what'd you get? I got a nine. Okay. Ontology? Eleven. Okay. Carlisle? Thirteen. Budimir? Twenty-two. Nice. 
and let me roll for the wolves. Uh, do, do, do. <sighs> so well 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 before we actually get into battle i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to terry and i'm gonna say terry your your mood seems to have resolved what <laughs> that's great yes well you know i came to the conclusion that all meaning is arbitrary and uh mm. you know even even outside of the book whether we choose for our lives or other lives to have meaning it's all you know it's all what we make of it and uh, my purpose is to shelve this book and uh, if that means I have to kill these people, whether they are imaginary or not, it is what is going to happen because shelving the book is what I choose to be meaningful. So whatever we, if that, that's the exit door, let's get it done. Terry's would, back. Would shelving huh. the book make you happy, Terry? Yes, as it always does. I am filled with purpose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with, with that in mind, <laughs> um, Udemir, you are up first. Uh, so describe to me what you do. You are currently 50. Yes, go ahead, Carlisle. Sorry. Oh, no. Uh, Carlisle says ontology Jones. I had a dolphin sandwich earlier. I'm filled with porpoise. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we might need to hake, just... that, to hake that again. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've moved on to fish puns. We should uh, really beat up the big fishy monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, you're now facing a bunch of wolves and a really, really angry emo horse <laughs> with a horn on. Yeah. So. And I've had it yeah. up to here with this shenanigan. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so go ahead, um, Udemir. Please describe to me what you're doing. Remember, you are um, 50 feet away currently. Well, the spell I want to cast has a range of 300 feet. So perfect. Oh. I cast Control Water. Which involves Excellent. Like a drop of water and a pinch of dust. And now I can make it flood. Uh, I can raise the level of standing water by 20 feet. And if the area includes a shore, the flooding water spills over onto dry land. And it would uh, push or capsize any vehicles that would be there. Well, there aren't any vehicles, but um, go ahead. <laughs> there are some werewolves. Um, the Avatar of LaRue... Um, is on the lake so let me think it's on the pond so i guess um where are you having it start you're starting it in the center of the pond yeah just the and whole having it level emanate of outwards? water extends upwards and so the stuff that's at the edge spills over and gotcha okay it's gonna cool. be a continuing so, thing this is a concentration spell what i want to you're do making a wave pool is okay suck great everyone into the pool oh so then I can oh. use the whirlpool that's very clever. Okay, great. Uh, go ahead and do you need to roll an attack nope. or what is was what? Uh, so that just happens. just happens. Do I need to? So what do I uh, need to or do? I guess there's a strength check. Werewolves? Fourteen. Okay, so I'm going to roll down, for all the swear wolves. The all of the werewolves. Actually, let me roll for each of them. So yeah, the water stays up until I choose a different effect. Okay, you managed to get three of the werewolves in. And the avatar remains uh, upright. Um, the okay, no, actually, right there are six werewolves. All but one of the werewolves are swept into the pond, and the avatar and one werewolf remain standing. And the avatar actually doesn't even look phased by the, um, the the tidal wave you've just created. And in fact, it just looks at you and you hear within your head, how dare you try to intervene? Foolish little druid, foolish. Uh, but meanwhile, you've got uh, five werewolves swimming around in a rather dank looking pool. <laughs> yeah, druids don't get any magical second standard actions on their turn, do they? <laughs> Not unless they... No, no not fine. really. That's my turn. <laughs> awesome. So, okay, I'm going to have to uh, split the werewolves up into the five that are in the pool and the one that is standing. So let's start with the one that's standing. Um, it's going to go ahead and uh, rush towards y'all. Um, 
it, it, it go ahead, it, it transitions completely into wolf form and it makes a dash action and to reach um, Udamir uh, within the woods. It cannot do anything because it made that dash action, but you've got an angry, um, very evil wolf now in your face. Um, the other wolves, they are in the uh, pond. And uh, can you describe to me again, like, it is upon, you haven't cast Whirlpool yet, right? No. The wolves are still... I, I've cast Flood, is what I cast. You've so cast Flood, the, okay. The water spilled over onto the shore. Okay, so let me just look at the map of the pond again. So how far have they dragged, have you, uh, so they just got sucked in, uh, I'd say about, let's say, make it about, like, 40 feet in? Sure. Um, and so they're going to try, they're, they're kind of, like, and so they they uh, they try to swim about thirty feet. They're about ten feet from the edge, and that's all they're going to do because they are in the pool. <laughs> um, next up is uh, Carlisle. You've got five werewolves in the drink. Uh, you've got one angry wolf uh, next to Utamir, and you've got a an emo unicorn. Uh, as the werewolf comes up towards Udemir, uh, Carlisle is going to take the bat eel axe uh, and smash it uh, with an uh, attack. So I get to roll with two attacks. The first one is 15, and the second one is 18. Okay. Um, both hit. Awesome. Uh... We can do this twice then. Five and four uh, plus uh, three for each as uh, 15 points of damage. Um, you smack that wolf and it whimpers as you hit it with your eel, uh, your, your weapon, and it is knocked oh, back a little bit um, and snarls at you. Um, so 15 damage. Yes, please. And anything else you'd like to do? Uh, Carl will uh, just stand there at the ready, watching the wolf and trying to see who it will try to go for, if it's still seven okay. me or not. No, in my turn. Ontology, you are up. Uh, I'm also, are we in the water or just the far, just, we're not standing in water yet, Rains are we? Shrubs. You're in, you're in some foliage right now. Perfect. Um yeah, excellent. Unless you'd like to rush forward towards you're 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 all about fifty feet away from the pool. No, I, I've gotten I've gotten I've gotten my smacking mace ready, and I'm gonna smack this werewolf. And I actually I get two attacks. So all right, uh, let's see. Um, does a nineteen hit? And then nineteen does hit. And then like a twenty three. So I'm gonna and gonna roll some extra damage. How fun! All right, seven eight. At 12 points of damage. Okay. Um, you absolutely take your uh, weapon. You smack that wolf. The wolf, um, again, snarls and recoils a little bit, but still is up on its feet. Yeah. So, sorry, that's 11? At 12. 12, thank you. All right. Uh, next. It, oh, is there anything else you'd like to do for your turn? Um, uh, 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 no, I'm fine. Okay, next is LaRue. Uh, LaRue um, uh, leaps gracefully into the air um, and gallops through the air. It's flying uh, towards you, and within one movement, it can do so. And it looks at Carlisle and uh, your, um, your eel situation and thinks, aren't you a clever little thing? I suppose you could perhaps serve me, but it seems you might need a little bit of persuasion and it rolls an attack on you. Um, guessing an 11 doesn't hit? That's, that's all but eel, I'm baby. I'm guessing that a 24 hits. Unless Carlisle says no, and another EO pops out of the bag with the shield spell. <laughs> As the unicorn, the unicorn um, 
uh, uh, tries to uh, uh, raises its hind, uh, raises up on its hind legs, uh, tries to kick at you. You sveltly kind of move out of the way, um, and <laughs> you kind of get kind of like shimmy, do a little elf shimmy, uh, you little shimmy out of the way. And uh, in frustration, it uh, tries to gore you with its horn. And uh, then it, you're out of your nap like an eel just pops out. <laughs> Um, and just it glances off uh, the, its horn glances off this uh, spectral eel who uh, says no and then like pops back into the back. MGMT plays in the background. Yes. Uh, it, it hisses at all of you and um, says how bothersome are all of you? And next is Terry. Terry's going to be real bothersome. Terry is uh, how many werewolves are in the pool? There are five werewolves in the pool. They are 10 feet from the shore. Excellent. I have this in my head like it's just a regular swimming pool. Like it's it's completely rectangular. There's chlorine. Whenever it's, it's called a pool, I think <laughs> there's just a bunch of dogs in the pool. And that's irritating. But, arr, but arr, arr. And a five, did you say? There be five there be wolves five. in the pool. Hopefully, there's going to be a couple left after this because I'm gonna I'm gonna cast a lightning bolt at yes! these. Uh, <laughs> At these five, uh, five were not dogs, cruelty to animals, eh, not good. These are werewolves, so that's okay. better somehow. And we, um, we're going to fire a lightning bolt at them. Um, and one of these things is going to have, uh, how, are they how, are they tightly grouped? Or are they very far apart? Like, could I get them all in one bolt? I mean, it's going to be an electrified pool anyway. <laughs> yeah, they can't, they can't get out. They can't. So like, they, you hit them. Okay. <laughs> you are, water conducts electricity. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> this is gonna hit. Okay. This is just gonna hit. All right. Well, then I'm I'm casting at the fourth level, and that oh, means. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that means. Uh, oh gosh. How many d six is that? Well, fourth level. That's nine d six. When I did it. Yeah. You're absolutely right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, for a total of thirty four damage. Um. All the you summon your um t describe to me how terry summons lightning from the sky terry kisses his fingers and points to the sky <laughs> <laughs> and it's again it's like a heavy metal album <laughs> just like lightning coursing down yep and and terry is struck by purple lightning and redirects that towards the the werewolves in the pool um, so yeah, uh, Terry lightning bends this lightning into the pool where it electrifies all of the wolves to go <laughs> and um, do not look happy. They are singed. They are um, definitely frizzled around the edges. They're not dead, uh, but they do. Sounds like look a lake full of Tim Allen's. <laughs> 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 We see their skeletons for a little bit. <laughs> you, you do see their skeletons. You see, actually, you don't just see their skeletons. You see the skeletons of all the other bodies that are in the water <laughs> for a hot second, highlighted by this purple background. <laughs> yes, it's just it's a wave of mutilation. Oh no! There are five Tim Allens that are actually werewolves. <laughs> all of the werewolves are secretly Tim Allen. They're in the pool. Oh. Uh, zot, uh, zot them again, Terry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. Okay. Um, Udemir, you are up. Ah. Whirlpool. <laughs> Please describe to me what happens and what I need to do. I will read the description. The Whirlpool starts, you. forms a vortex, and is five feet wide at the base, 50 feet wide at the top, 25 feet tall. Any creature or object in the pool uh, in the water and within 25 feet of the vortex is pulled 10 feet towards it. Creatures can swim away by making a strength athletics check. Uh, the DC is 14. Uh, when a creature enters the vortex for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 2d8 bludgeoning damage and is caught in the vortex until the spell ends. On a success, half damage. And not caught. So, uh, four of the um, 
four of the Tim Allen werewolves um, are uh, do not make their strength to, uh, save as as you create this whirlpool. And I can't help but imagine like the Wicked Witch of the West sound like music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah as, as it begins, and you hear like a draining noise, like when you like pull the stopper from your your sink, just like a noise and um yeah one one werewolf manages to make it to the shore and and it clings into like a uh the the, the root of a tree <laughs> as its compatriots are like oh as um they they take a bunch of damage i imagine yeah. so why don't you roll why don't you roll me that damage? uh for each of them the for four of them uh why don't you roll me um just just uh if you want to do it one by one that's cool if you just want to give me i just give you the full the, uh, oh nice aggregate 12. okay uh, 12 and then and uh on their turn they can try to take the swim action to escape uh with disadvantage and then there's one uh that takes half damage right because they saved yeah okay so they're uh, the you see the Tim Allen wolves like start circling and they're just like flailing around. Uh, you see one of them is wearing flannel. Another one has a look on their face that speaks to really awkward politics. And uh, they, yeah, they're just they're just they're circling down the drain that is the whirlpool. Yeah. So any uh, any object that's in the pool is also taking damage. So all the bodies are getting a little smushy. Yeah, you see, you see, like um, they they take a little, they, a, a couple of like chunks of like dead bodies, just smack them in the face as they're um, swirling around in this vortex. Uh, next are the werewolves. So um, you said that they need to make a swim check in order to try to get mm -hmm. out. Uh, what's the DC for it's that? Fourteen, but they have disadvantage to swim away if they failed the save previously. Uh, okay, they have disadvantage. That one didn't make it. That one, that one definitely didn't make it. <laughs> okay, one of yeah, that one didn't make it because disadvantage. I think they're all just not going to make it. I can do this for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> one of them succeeds. <laughs> one of them succeeds. It grabs onto the carcass of a of a caribou that's like swirling around, and the caribou gets stuck alongside another tree branch, and they're just like stand, so st like they're just lying on top of it, just like. Ugh. Um, whereas, okay, so that's uh, so you've still got uh four wolves in the drink. Uh, one of them, no, 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 you've got three wolves in the drink. No, sorry, you got four wolves in the drink. One of them is currently in the forest. One of them is stuck on a caribou um and uh that one is going to try to get out of the whirlpool and so uh that i think also requires this one check right if it's or i think it might just, just the climb one, the out one check yeah just the one check makes the same throw it manages to clamber out yeah. it manages to clamber out and it's on land now it's on the shore um and now the other uh, wolf that is looking, um, <laughs> looks at all of its other Tim Allens in the water. It goes like, and uh, tries to attack Terry <laughs> because Terry's the one that <laughs> um, electrocuted its friends. Um, does a um, 20 hit? It does hit. And so Terry's going to go incorporeal. And uh, okay. what I imagine is so slashing or bludgeoning or... Um, it is, uh, he's biting you, so that is half of piercing damage. Let me... So that's, um, so that's six piercing damage. Excellent. And um, you need to succeed on a d12 constitution saving throw. Uh, your, your, your dungeon managementness. Yeah, um, sure. I have. If they go imperial, then no. Well, no, I have the interceptor um, uh, fighting style. Oh, so, nice. do so you want to intercept? I you? would love to. On each of my turns, I can roll one d10 plus my fighter level and reduce that damage from anyone within five feet of me. And since that wolf was right there, yeah, that happened. We reduce it um, by a total of eight. So, um, as another 
Uh, this time, a turbot, which is a kind of freshwater flounder, <gasps> um, erupts from your bag and uh, smacks itself in front of Terry, uh, between Terry and the werewolf, um, and uh, <laughs> um, uh, swims away. <laughs> and it's going; it's a multi-attack, so it's going to try to make an attack on your incorporeal form. Can it? I forget if it can do that. Um, uh, can you just, Terry? I, are you? I have. Um... I have resistance to like basically physical damage. Uh, I can't be grappled or restrained, um, and I can move through solid objects. So it doesn't doesn't say it has no effect on me. You can bite me. Okay, and... so it's going to try to bite you again. Okay. Um, does a an eighteen hit? Yes, it does. All right, it's going to um make some damage. Damage. Um, you're going to take uh, seven damage. Uh, that's halved already. Okay. Um, and please make a DC 12 constitution saving throw. I hope you do. But if not, you're going to turn into a Tim Allen werewolf. Oh, no. Okay. Ghost werewolf is a hat on a hat, man. We're going to, let's see. And don't forget to use your portent. That's true. Well, that's uh, on a D12, that's an 11 plus 2 is a 13. So I'm guessing I passed. Okay, so you're fine. Okay. You you feel you feel an urge to start your own reactionary family sitcom, and you you stop. You, that, that urge fades. Excellent. Because I've suppressed <laughs> yes. it again. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the werewolves have done what they were meant to do. And Carla, you are up next. Uh, I, I don't like this wolf, but I especially don't like that pony. Uh, <laughs> does the wolf look bloodied at all? Oh, the wolf is definitely not looking great. Uh, uh, Carl Lyle will turn over to Ontology. Uh, do you want the dog or the pony? Uh, you know what? I think you can put out more damage. You take the pony. I'll clean up after the dog. I respect that. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> this is going to be dumb. Uh, <laughs> Carlisle L. Daniels open up his bag, uh, <laughs> like wide open and out comes, uh, an entire school of fish. Each of them playing tiny little drums led by a giant tuna that looks like the 45th vice president of the United States. <laughs> and they all spread out and play their little drums and take turns uh biting the uh <laughs> by, so a bunch of piranhas come out led by a giant tuna that looks like the 45th vice president an of the orange United tuna I, so it's a yellow fin tuna no gotcha. it's an albacore algorithm and i cast two <laughs> magic missiles at second level with an action surge at the uh <laughs> at the giant pony please please roll me some damage okay i'm gonna use the on digital the pony. one <laughs> Boom, boom. And for numbers. Oh no. Okay, so that's five, that's 20, all right. Uh, 38 points of damage. Ah, oh, dang. Um, and this is against the pony. Yes. All right, um, I am gonna quickly do a math. Is there anything else you would like to do? The, you, you, the piranhas, oh well, well, the albacore, the tuna, all the fish, all the fish happen. It's like it's like a bad day at Pike Place Market. Like just a bunch of fish just come out, start smacking the heck out of this pony, and this unicorn is just like, oh, 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 this is no, no, this is this is not dignified. This is not dignified. Nope, it's the inconvenient truth. And now, in my turn. <laughs> all right. And with that, uh, let's go to Ontology. Oh my god, Ontology is very impressed by how uh, how prawny Carlisle is. Uh, very stylish, but so strong. Um, and Ontology, how, okay, so I, I said I'd clean up after the dog. The, how injured does the dog look? Quite injured or still like he's got some pep in him? It's it's quite injured. All right. uh, he looks at you and he makes like a... Uh, I just hit it as hard as you can until I'm it gonna, dies. I'm going to put it out of its misery. I'm going to try to attack it twice. Oops, that's the wrong dice. Uh, all right, hold on. What's, uh, geez, am I going to hit on like a 13 and a 14? Um, yes. Oh, no way. Okay. Yes, you do. Wow. All right, that's... Uh, werewolves aren't really eight. known for wearing armor. These werewolves uh, suck. 
I'm, I'm going to deal uh, 15 points of damage to it um, and hope that I kill it. It still stands. In that case, can I... I'm just trying to save my spell slots because I don't have that many. Uh, in that case, can I do something fun and um, can I also uh, cast Divine Smite when I'm hitting with my melee weapon attack to deal Go an extra it. 2d8? Yeah. All right. Do it. I, it seems like it seems like we need some some uh, divine assistance here. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna deal. Uh, I'm gonna deal another six damage to it, and it um, snarl. You you smack. Uh, at this point, like, it is bloodied, and with that last blow, like, you you take out, like, one of its eyes, Ooh. and it just snarls at you and, and tries to, like, it basically starts to try to come back out of its, um, where, oh, wolf form. Um, it's going to try to shape change, but we'll see if it can do that. Um, next, is, is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I don't know. Position myself between the softer members of the party and uh, the pointier members of the opposition, I suppose. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> All right. Um, goth emo pony is up next, and um, it's still not super happy about you, Carlisle. It's going to... She's going to go ahead and make a tacky tax. Um... Does a 24 hit? 24 hits. Unless... Okay. Do you have another shield spell? No, I'm not going to use a second level slot. I'm not going to do it. Uh, okay, I'm like, how many shield spells do you have? It's like you're only... You, you've only stacked... You've only stocked shield for this entire session. It's just shield. Shield. It's, yeah. Well, <laughs> noted. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's going to go ahead and um, uh, it rears back again and uh, attempts to uh, smack you with its hind hooves. It's going to kick you, um, and it's going to uh, make do thirty two necrotic damage. Wait, I have a question. Is, is yes? Is Carlisle within five feet of me? Do we think? Um, I think all of y'all are roughly within five feet of each other. Right. I mean, I do have, I can re, I have a reaction for protection. <gasps> and, okay. uh, so while wielding a shield and a creature you can see, it could definitely see the, this, the, the mad sky pony attacks a target other than you. Definitely. I can use my reaction to impose disadvantage on that attack roll. Oh, no. <laughs> Time <laughs> freezes and ontology. You're like, no. <laughs> And we would go down a different leg of this of the time of the time pants. Okay. Does a twenty-two hit? It does. Okay. I still appreciate that move. Carlisle sees that. So Carlisle, you do take thirty-two necrotic damage, and then um, they're going to basically uh, also try to um, gore you with its horn. Mm. So. I'm guessing that um, does an 18 hit. 18 does not hit. All right. Um, you swiftly dodge out of the way after facing some hooved onslaught. And uh, the um, the uh, the corrupted avatar of Lerou looks at you and says, I'll get you next time. You will be one of mine, like these. And it motions towards the werewolf. Whee. You have hooves, so I can't... <laughs> I won't suffer defeat. <laughs> no, I didn't like that okay. one. Okay. Can we, can we start over? Can we start the sure. let's start from the beginning? No, that's not so how we're combat. at Terry's car. This is <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Terry, you are up. Uh so the are there still werewolves going around the drink there, or there's? Yeah, there are there are three werewolves uh, going around the drink. Okay, we're gonna fix that then. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going. Actually, no, there are four werewolves running around the drink. Sorry. And they're in rough shape, are they? They look. Uh, they are not looking super hot. Okay, then I'm. I mean, they're t they're Tim Allen wolves. They never really look. They're all gonna that die in that enough, hole. But they look. Yeah. <laughs> pretty bad. Yep. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the wolf who tried to bite me. Uh, now that I've come out of my ghost form, 
and and give him a like what what did you just did you i'm gonna kiss the fingers on my other hand point them up to the sky <laughs> still maintaining eye contact and zap his wolf brethren in the pool uh at the third level so that's only eight d6 one, two, three, four, five. Oh, only eight D six. <laughs> only eight D six. And that is thirty-five damage. Describe to me how you fry these Tim Allen wolves to death. Oh in this swirling pool of morass and decay and death. Oh, it's not PG. This is this is a horrible thing I've done. A large black sensor block suddenly appears over the whirlpool. Yes, yes, because organs will explode. They will oh, leave hear... the body. It's not pretty. It's a horrible thing just... that I've done. To the me. animal like, bystanders we're... wrote letters to their congressmen. Exactly. Listen, werewolves, not animals. Talking squirrels, not animals. They're kind of sentient, so what I'm doing, not cruelty to animals, just straight up murder, which is fine in D&D. &D. You ever Check see what happens when you put a hot dog in the microwave for too long? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what happens when you uh, fill up a drain, uh, fill up a sink, and then pull the garbage disposal, and then electrocute the hot dogs that are floating around <laughs> that drain? <laughs> That's what happens here. Yeah. So yes, you see a big sensor block like appear over the whirlpool <laughs> as Terry just electrocutes. You hear like some uh, just direct current, pop, is not pop. Safe. Yeah. Yeah, four four solid wet pops, and then all goes silent. Yeah, oh. all goes all goes silent. You oh. smell the smell of cooking meat. Solid wet pops. Oh god, that's a new short sharp sharp shock. That's, that's yeah. Very solid wet pops. <laughs> <laughs> Udemir, you're Terry. Is there anything else you'd like to do? I'm going to um just just as I've maintained eye contact. With this werewolf, I'm going to look, I'm just going to lean forward and say, RUN! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like morphing into a human, so you can see like, even though it's morphing into a human, mm -hmm. its expression in its eyes from wolf shape to human are still, they still possess that, that glint of pure terror at the deep, cold nihilism in your <laughs> in your soul <laughs> and with that let's go to Udemir. <laughs> oh uh uh carl lyle do you mind if i touch you for a moment uh yeah uh cure wounds at third level oh it's an 18 and uh are there is there anything alive in the pool still <laughs> uh there's no, no but there is one werewolf that has crawled away about 10 feet Blood. From... <laughs> <laughs> it just goes Splash. and um I'm guessing a 10 doesn't do it. No. <laughs> it gets sucked back in. <laughs> and uh, is 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 very, very sad. So um, now we are... Is there anything else you'd like no. to do? Okay. The, uh, the werewolf in the drink is going to try to make a strength saving throw with disadvantage. It does not get out of the pool. Um... <laughs> It, you hear it go, which is like FML <laughs> in wolf. Um, and the uh, the other wolf that's still around all y'all uh, looks at Terry and uh, basically tries to run away. Um, it is it is truly terrified of Terry. Terry is now terrifying, <laughs> um, and is going to make a dash. Um, 60 feet away from you um, further into the woods. Uh, this gives, I believe, uh, Terry ontology and uh, Terry especially and ontology a, um, an attack of opportunity. Mm -hmm. I smack him. Okay, smack him. Uh, well, do I get two? Do I get, I get to attack twice if I take an attack. So do I get two, two flails with my morning star? I think you just get the one. Yeah, well, then I miss. Woof. 
Oh, okay. Uh, Terry, would you like to make an opportunity attack? Oh, yes. The squirrel is very clear. I need to destroy all of these uh, uh, beings that may or may or not exist. So I'm going to magic missile um, at the second level, let's say, just to be sure. And so Terry is going to call forth um, these uh, the four bolts of magical energy as darts, which he throws, and then they turn into javelins and pelt this poor, poor thing in the back. For how many damage? How many damage is 4d6? No, 4, 4d4, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 8 plus 4, 12 damage. Your spear catches the retreating werewolf from behind as it ducks underneath Ontology's weapon. And like an over kebab shish kebab, your javelins just nail this werewolf to a tree. <laughs> so brutal. <laughs> this is like Mortal Kombat level ridiculousness coming from Terry Fatality. tonight. <laughs> Fatality. And it's and it finish him. In his mind, it's just him shelving a book. This is all this is. It's just and that makes it extra creepy and horrible. Just... You just you just turn all of you turn around. <laughs> Not used to this level of brutality from Terry, and Terry's just standing there in his ghost form, just mm -hmm. completely unbothered by the wow. gross amount of violence he has inflicted tonight. Um, hey, if you're watching at home, go back and watch the first session. <laughs> <laughs> That's called we, character we, development. We've gone through friends. a whole arc. I'm just letting y'all know. Uh, Carlisle. You want a grim dark? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> No, I just really to see Terry in a Mortal Kombat 11, like one of the DLC characters, like Rocky and stuff. Just Terry like wobbling on and just being like, I don't care about any of this. Just wait for that redemption arc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who, buddy? All right, Carlisle, you've got a magical angry pony trying to kill you. Um, this pony is talking. So I don't, mm, I'm going to have to soften it up a bit. I'm going to throw a mind sliver at it. Um, All right. And I need you to make a, an intelligent saving throw. Ah, <sighs> this is an avatar. I, um, I'm afraid I got a natural three. All right. Uh, you take a uh, 2d6 points of damage. Uh, 11. You take 11 points of damage. And until my next, until the end of my next turn, I can subtract a d4 from your next saving throw. Nice. Uh, Excellent. And uh, yeah, Carlisle will create some distance to direct, to draw the ire of the horse away from the group in case there are any AOE attacks coming. Are you, um, how far are you moving? Are you moving out of melee range? Uh, I am moving not out of uh, melee range, five feet mm -hmm. to the side. Okay, yeah. okay, good. I just wanted to know whether or not I was gonna do an attack of opportunity. All right, um, Ontology Jones, you're up. Your, uh, your friend has just skewered this half man, half wolf. Um, and uh, there is a floating emo pony with a horn. Uh, I, I mean, God, Terry. Terry is, Terry's scaring me a bit, but also the wolves are taking, like, most of them are, like, there's only one left and he's, like, bobbing up and down going blah, 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 blah right? So. Um, no, the wolves in the pool are dead. There's one up on shore. Oh, no, no, no there is, no, you are correct. There is one around. in the pool just bobbing around being like, blah, 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 right. like, blah, blah. Oh, it's, it's such a shame there doesn't appear to be a lifeguard on duty. All right, um, let's see. You uh, see that one of the wolves actually has, like, a lifeguard vest on. <laughs> It's one of the ones that's already floating upside down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you see, it's like badly singed, like one of the bodies. It's just badly singed. There's like a, a floaty device that goes by a safety, like a, a floating vest goes by also singed and burned. Um, do you think that uh, this, uh, do you do you, do you think bad horse here uh, is, uh, it would be unholy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so. Okay, because I can channel divinity, divinity to turn the unholy. Uh, so I can censure those fiends. Uh, I can censure fiends and undead. 
Uh, and anyone, any of them that can see or hear me uh, has to make a whiz saving throw. And uh, then it's uh, it's turned for a minute or until it takes damage. So maybe if we can turn it, then we can talk some sense of it. Because I don't particularly want to kill LaRue. Right. I want to I want okay. to speak to it and get it to snap out of this because it is a good it is an avatar of like it's a good creature normally. What's the DC? 15. But I think Ky uh, Carlisle can take four off 15. its saving throw. So go ahead and give me a uh, give me that roll. All right. Uh, oh, no, you have to make a roll. Oh, no, I made a roll. But uh, I, I do I need to roll the D4 to take away from that? Or do you want to do that? Okay, cool. So track three. Um, the emo pony fails. <gasps> and as you raise your uh, sacred sigil into the sky, um, you feel the call. You As you call for your god, your god answers you. And you feel this deep warmth in your heart that emanates in out throughout your body into a glow. And what do you say to the corrupted avatar of Larue to uh, make it stop? All right, I'm gonna say uh, I should have I should have put some puns in here, but I didn't think of any puns because I was just thinking of what to do. So I'm gonna say, hey, look, look here, bad horse. I know you're actually technically a good horse. So get down here, have some hay, calm down, right now. Take three or four big deep breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. Get yourself settled. Um, with this commanding, uh, surprisingly kind of like parental advice, um, the, the, uh, Avatar of LaRue looks at you and, um, like mesmerized by, uh, your command, um, takes several deep breaths. And as it does so, you can see the crackling red energy off of it start to, to, to sort of like shrink a little bit shrink a little bit until it's fully contained and then there and then it descends onto the ground looks up at ontology jones and says huh and then a giant white bolt of lightning crackles down from the sky and hits the unicorn and you hear um you hear just a giant like kaboom as the thunder um of uh, swiftly follows and the um uh, unicorn uh you see like bolts of li little fizzles of lightning um as your eyes begin to adjust after that shock of light um you see before you like the almost like the is it the Merrimax logo? I forget which logo, which film logo it is, the one with the Pegasus. Tristar. Oh, Tristar. <laughs> yeah, Tristar. It's like the Tristar logo, except instead it's the Pegasus. It's a unicorn. Uh, just comes forward. And um, it, this the, the unicorn has returned to her true form, that of LaRue herself. And um, as she um, opens her large, purple, lustrous eyes, you all hear within your heads, Thank you so much for saving me, from saving our this place from Moral. I I was Malar rather. I was trapped for the longest time, and when they started dumping bodies into the pool, you know, I tried to stop them, but they managed to trick me and turn me into this corrupted state. Are Are you all right? I'm okay. I think Terry's not had a great day, though, so if you wanted to say something nice to him, he'd probably appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, this, this beautiful creature turns to you and says, What's wrong, my friend? Uh, Terry has been looking at the sky uh, and goes, Sorry, what? And continues looking up, looking for the V end to be written <laughs> in backwards giant letters. It's like, yeah, it's we've we've learned something and it's I'm it's this is resolving very nicely. I'm glad this is such a resolve to the story. Staring skyward. Yeah, Carl. You're muted. Avatar of LaRue. Um uh, perhaps um we could be repaid somehow uh for enduring all of this and, and taking upon this physical and emotional toll. 
Um, is there a way that you could um, bequeath um, my friend here with some sort of gift uh, outside of the uh, the B word? He thinks oh. mentioning that they're in a book is kind of offensive. <laughs> And he's just trying to play it cool. <laughs> so you came in through the book. Yes, that. So I see. And this brings you distress, Mr. Is it Fizzlewit? It's given me an existential crisis. Absolutely. If I give more meaning to this book, does that mean there's less meaning to what I thought of as the real world? Is if this is it, it just I, I don't even want to start. I don't want to start. I don't want to start. It'll take me down the spiral again. It's it's it's. Yeah. Uh, Terry, um, the, the unicorn walks over to you and gently touches your head with her horn and you hear clear as day. This is real, Terry. If you had let, even though you came through here in a book, even though the stars are writing words, this is a real place. You simply, the book was simply a gate. And there is a mystical link between this place and the book. But do not think that your actions here are less important because they were in a book. They affected the real world. And in many ways, books do affect the real world, but but this is real. This is totally real. You can come see me actually, if you want. And she tells you like where the lake is and stuff like that. <laughs> and she steps back and she's like, I don't know if I helped, but I tried. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, if you here, follow me, it seems that you should be perhaps all go back to, I'm guessing Candlekeep, that's mm. where this book was found. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to send this werewolf on one last spin cycle. Uh. Oh, it's okay. I've got, I've got this. And she walks over and she uh, puts her horn in the water and she, I, you start to see like purifying energy come radiate outwards from where she touches the water. And as uh, it touches the wolf, you can see he turns into Bernie Sanders, a <laughs> Bernie Sanders like figure. And he's that like, man's going to drown. <laughs> <laughs> he holds he's he actually he turns into uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, who's holding on to a floaty and she says oh yes do not worry we will find him um a way to get back see he's actually a very good swimmer and you see him swimming back he's like I'm fine <laughs> and gives you a thumbs up um feel a lot she says a lot worse about smacking all those other ones now uh, it's it's all right. We'll figure it out. <laughs> you, they did what you had to do. I don't think they would blame you. We'll figure it out. Grabs a shovel from behind a tree and starts to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the water like rises and turns into a portal back into Candlekeep, and she says, "If you step this way, you will be transported home." Right, Yay! Here we, here we go, Terry. We did it. Now we can put the book away. Uh, yes, yes, we will. We will put the book away. That's what we will do. And Terry <laughs> steps through the portal. You're back, Terry. You're back home. You step through a portal, and you see behind you, you know, the unicorn standing there, Larue standing there, and your friends follow you mm -hmm. through the portal. And uh, she says farewell. And thank you once again. If you have ever need of rest, relaxation, you know where to find me. And uh, the uh, the portal starts growing smaller and smaller and smaller, and it goes, bloop, and with a little and a little shower of um, sparkling droplets, a ring falls to the floor. Um, a ring and uh, four um, little squirrel charms silver <gasps> squirrel charms fall to the oh. floor look at these oh um, here you go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who wants the ring uh, carl takes the ring he'll put it on his pinky could you imagine that a pinky ring oh my goodness <laughs> so um each, uh, so, Carl, you cast Identify. I don't know, if, Terry, if you also have Identify, but Carl, you cast Identify, and you realize this is a ring of shooting stars. Oh. 
and I will give you the um, the uh, specs for that. But each of you, as you pick up the little um, silver squirrel charms, you see that the squirrels have little waistcoats on. Um, <laughs> it's you, fluffy uh, bottom. <laughs> you see that it is in fact a um, a charm of animal conjuring. So that means we can have a squirrel friend who's fun to be with whenever we want. Who knows? You'll just have to see. Ah, sounds like it's going to be so... nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and Diana, who's been standing here the whole time, like is like, okay, I think this means that the book can be shelved. Do you want to do the honors, Terry? Terry, uh, uh... Terry takes the book and said, I'd be glad to. And he goes to the section of reformed evil animals. And puts, it, <laughs> puts it right right where it, it looks it looks the most um, uh, aesthetically pleasing. Not not bothering to think about what order it's in. This is how deeply book... troubled this whole event has made him. <laughs> the book remains. Mm -hmm. And uh, you all manage to, you hear the tolling of bells for dinner oh. and uh diana says oh i think i think we're good i mean like adventuring totally counts as work so let's go let's go get some grub from the candle key cafeteria i hear they have new cheese shipment today that should be fun oh mm -hmm. yeah i think it's fondue night <gasps> delicious um and so as each of you walk away would any of you like to make a perception check before you leave yes ah. All, only for story purposes, because I think ontology would be super into fondue. Thirteen. Uh, seven. So she is really into fondue. Terry, Terry. What, did you make a perception check? I will. That's an eighteen. As you walk away, Terry, out of the corner of your eye, you see the book, The Lore of LaRue, float out of the shelf and go over to the divinity section and nestle itself in. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and I think as you all rush off to fondue night, um, we uh, the camera pans out from uh, our heroes and focuses on the night sky as the uh, inviting smell of melted cheese and toasted crackers and various other um, delicious fondue items um, waft into the night. And that ends our wonderful adventure of the lore of LaRue. Thank you all Yay! so much for tuning Yay! in. I hope you all enjoyed this adventure. Who knows what I don't under. I think I broke Terry. I am <laughs> a little fine. concerned. It's fine. He's very close okay. to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah terry as you as you leave you notice in your parking spot someone's left like a broom <laughs> so. ah free broom for you terry yeah i i don't i just free free broom i don't think terry is going to be satisfied until he goes to that place that the unicorns said they were and then goes there with a the telescope and looks up and determines whether there are words in the sky uh, ooh, can i can i use my uh conjure animal ring to conjure like a bull you do that and i give it to terry for, to ride you know uh, sa <laughs> save a horse ride a cowboy <laughs> the 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 um <laughs> the bull is just like it's a boy and like snuffles snuffles terry you terry you now have like cow spit in your hair oh. excellent excellent <laughs> Happy birthday, Terry Fizzlewitz. <laughs> oh, thank you. And Udemir, as you walk into the Candle Key cafeteria, you see a giant cake in front of you made of cheese. <laughs> and everyone's like, Udemir, we found out it was your birthday. Oh, it's oh. Udemir's birthday, too. I gotta go. Wow. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, I'm not sure you bought enough candles, but this is fine. It's a real big wheel of cheese. There are so many candles. Where do you think candles come from? They store them here. 
<laughs> it's candle keep. They don't lack for candles here. <laughs> big ones, small ones, one as big as your head. It's like the, the force of the heat from the candles is just melting the cheese, and that's how they're making the fondue. Yeah, that's how they're making the fondue. And that's where we'll actually leave our adventurers <laughs> in front of a flaming wheel of cheese. <laughs> Birthday cheese. Ooh, birth the best thing cheese. I've smelled all day. <laughs> Awesome. So yes, thank you all for tuning in. If you are not able to watch the beginning of this, uh, we will all have it loaded up on our YouTube channel on Wednesday and also on our Dice Friends podcast found wherever fine, unusual, and irreverent podcasts can be found. Um, with that, let's uh, go to, let's. where can we find our wonderful players? Um, uh, let's start from the, the reverse order. Um, Andy, where can we find you? What are you up? What do you want to plug? Oh, well, I've, I've got a Twitter account at, at Andrew Cowden, and you can find uh, more information about me at, at andrewcowden.com. <laughs> Excellent. And Kathleen? Uh, you can find me right here. Uh, I, I pop up occasionally and do things. And more, most importantly, on Wednesday this week, you will see me playing Speaking of D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, the brand new set, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, the pre-pre-release is coming here on, uh, is going to be here on Wednesday. Ooh. We've got cool new cards. We get to touch them before anyone else. It's very exciting. <laughs> How do they um, smell, though? Uh, I, you know what? Like xylene, I guess. I mean, they're never great. But So did what, did Wizards provide some of Tensor's floating disc play mats, like Tensor's floating play mats for you to play on? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm providing my own desk in front of my own computer, uh, so it's almost the same. <laughs> That's fair. It can hold 500 pounds. You can lift it 10 feet. Well, it's, it's from great. Ikea. I wouldn't put 500 pounds on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Corey. Hello. Where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Absalar. Uh, also, I stream here a lot. Like Mondays, I have a, a, a drawing thing called Can't Draw Horses Club. So if you want to go back in time earlier today, you can see that. Nice. Awesome. And Kiss, what are you up to? Where where can we find you? I'm just dicking around on Twitter. Find me <laughs> under what is Kiss. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was crude. Uh, yeah, find me on what is Kiss and, and, uh, and, and, and maybe some other stuff later around these part parts, if I keep using phrases like that. <laughs> oh, amazing. And if you are looking to follow me and my shenanigans, you can find me on um, Twitter at Kiln Fiend Potter. Kiln Fiend, like the old ye old ye popper stable, uh, staple, not stable. That's a different thing altogether. Um, where I also um, I talk about mostly games, uh, magic, feminism. Um, my cats and ceramics. So um, hang out with me there. And uh, you can see me also here occasionally um, streaming with Loading Ready Run, um, doing fun stuff like this. And you can see my cat. <laughs> this is Lady Supples. <laughs> <laughs>